Welcome, everybody. To Hello. <laughs> Hi, this is TSG Live Talking Trains, our monthly show. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, September 21st. It's about four o'clock on the West Coast. And five the area for me. Where, yeah, five <laughs> o'clock in the mount, mountain time. <laughs> and in the Bay Area, we have kind of a weird day. I'm looking outside out the window. It's kind of a weird day today. It's kind of a little overcast. Felt like it was going to have a like we were going to get a storm earlier, but that didn't happen. And oh, I had the most amazing rainy day. It's been beautiful here and cold. I love it. Love it. Long sleeve t-shirt. It's awesome. <laughs> but it's another <laughs> train shirt, though. So it's number forty-eight. Days? This is number, number forty-eight. 48. <laughs> number forty-eight. So for those people who don't know, Michelle has been doing a daily like tr train shirt of the day thing for uh, what two months almost now. Yeah. I can't do absolutely every day, but when I can, I wear them. And Are you getting close to the end? or? I think I was looking in my downstairs closet and I was like, oh, darn, there's like 15 more down here. <laughs> so oh. I have no idea. There's a, I'm probably going to end around 70, 75. I don't oh, know. Geez. Yeah. And here I was with my, you know, 20 shirts maybe or 21 <laughs> shirts thinking, oh, yeah, I'll really compete. This is one of my favorite ones, the Shea Racing that. Team. Oh, that way. I love that shirt. This, I have this one, one too. <laughs> right? It makes a lot more sense if you understand what a Shea is. <laughs> because... I don't think I've worn that one. I don't think I've worn that one yet. I oh. think it'll be in, it's still to come. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will, and I'm sure it'll be great. And I'm sure you'll get lots of thumbs up on your Facebook posts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been fun because I can talk about where I got the shirt because every shirt I got has a memory with it. Right. So, There's a story for all of them. There's a huh? story with it. Yeah. Well, this is going to be fun. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we we have a guest, Michelle. We do. And let's get to our guest. And then we have other stuff later, but we want to get to our guest first. Yeah. So. We have so much to talk about this time. And yeah. So hang the in till the end because there's lots at the end too. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on and has been a lot going on. I, I do want to mention something about our guest. So, uh, we were uh, together in August when you were out here, Michelle, and I introduced you to our guest. And on this last podcast, I said that he was going to be, or actually, was, wait a minute, you were here in July. July. And I was like going to say it was the beginning of July. <laughs> yeah. See, time just totally goes away. So I, we did a podcast segment. Uh, our guest name is Chris, and we did a podcast segment with Chris, and I said, yeah, he's going to be on the Talking Trains show in, in uh, August. And then he wasn't able to do it. So we got him today. <laughs> yeah, so we got him tonight. And he's still having to work around some work stuff. So we're just thankful he cut out some time for us. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, I told him last time, you know, tell the, don't they know how important we are? Like, just cut. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> this is very important. But, Who needs so, your day job that makes money? We don't need that. <laughs> yeah. So I offered to pay him twice as much this time. So let's bring him on. <laughs> Since, okay. Yeah, let's bring him on. Oh, hi, Chris. Hello there. Hi, Chris. <laughs> yeah, the, the check is in the mail twice as yeah. much as we promised for last month. Oh, so. that's good. It's about the same as the Railroad <laughs> Museum where they double my pay every weekend. You know? mm -hmm. I do the yeah, same. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes right. it comes. Always a volunteer, with... always a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, this is a kind of a, an interesting, I think, an interesting story. So people have seen you on the podcast a couple of times or maybe even a few times now because I'd be up at Niles Canyon, you know, covering something, you know, whether it's the restoration of 1744 or some event that they're having. And I've run into you, but before I knew who you were, I'd always see you like there was this, there was some guy in Niles Canyon that drove around in a little orange car and he always had a camera. And every time I was up there doing something, <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was Chris, right. It was you. And what happened was, Finally, one day, I don't even know what it was. We're, we, we were, you were taking pictures. It was some event or something. And I was finally like, 
you know, I see you up here all the time. Who are you? Or something like that. Or I don't think you asked me. I, I think I was being nosy. And then I found out who you were and found out that you have been photographing stuff around Niles Canyon for about the past, I don't know, what, 10 years? Yeah, I'm out here 10 years now. I've been photographing yeah. stuff for longer than that, but 10 years in, 10 years in the Bay well, Area. Right. When I say photographing stuff for 10 years, I mean around Niles Canyon. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, yeah around Niles right. Canyon. 10 years ago would have been probably about the first time when I started seeing you running around there. So yeah. um, it took me only probably three or four years to find out who you were. <laughs> uh, well, you know, don't want to rush into things. Don't want to, you know, don't want to overcommit too fast. <laughs> yeah. The, the life of an introvert, right? Yeah. <laughs> it takes four years to meet somebody. But um, so I, I found it, in, found it interesting though. And I thought that it would be, worthwhile to talk to you on our show here because you've not only volunteered at Niles Canyon for the past 10 years and you don't just take pictures, but you also do other stuff as a volunteer. And I find it all very interesting. And I also find that it's a great example of you can volunteer somewhere and not necessarily know something technical about the trains. Like you don't have to be a steam locomotive engineer no. to volunteer somewhere you could just be someone who's really good with the camera who wants to help with social media or in your case you could be someone who knows how to paint the cars or prep the cars for painting yeah uh, because well, I mean, that's something else that you do that i thought was kind of interesting so why don't you tell us a little bit about your sort of your, your history and volunteer yeah. so i've been with niles canyon for 10 years um Actually, we'll start a little further. Born and raised in New Jersey, so I'm an East Coast kid. Um, then went to Rochester, New York to go to college. Um, so my background is actually I have degrees in imaging science and color science. So the, the science of imaging and the science of crayons or markers like up on Michelle's uh, and more applied to imaging. And then I spent 20 years working for Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester. Um, so kind of working, you know, so... Uh, but I've always been a photographer. I've had a I've had a camera. My father was an avid photographer. Put a camera in my hand uh, early on. Actually, the 110 camera is sitting on the shelf over my over my head here. Um, and so, and then uh, you know, always had a love of trains. And then, kind of started when I was a teenager, had kind of melding the two together. Um, growing up in northeastern New Jersey, I was fortunate that the NRHS chapters my dad and I got involved with was also the home of the editors of Rail Pace magazine and Rail Fan and Railroad magazine. So Jim Boyd and Mike Del Vecchio and Tom Namath. Um, and they were all quite kind to me at a young age and would, especially Jim would, you know, I'd come running in every, every meeting with a handful of prints and he would kind of, you know, this was film days, you no know, digital, you had to go in a dark room and, you know, and he, I would show him what I had and, you know, he would critique him and give me some things. And then, um, you know, went to Rochester to go to school and got involved right away with the NRHS chapter there, which is now the Rochester and Genesee Valley Railroad Museum. And I've been a member there. I think I'm going on 33 years. Um, was president of the organization, was on the board for 14 years, managed the museum for a bunch of years, and then just also did a lot of volunteer work. But again, combined my love of photography with our need for things like brochures and marketing and then websites, right? We built our first website in 1995 when, you know, HTML1 um, and, and got involved in doing the website and things like that and some of the graphic design and brochures. And, and then social media came around and YouTube and the idea of, you know, I'm a still photographer. I'm kind of the opposite of you. I'm, I, I, I do still photography and dabble in video every so often. Um, but there's a lot of power in video. So, I, and, and that's kind of the hybrid. And I've always been kind of caught between, all right, I'm working on some project or volunteering, doing something and, oh, that's a really cool thing that should be documented. And also part of this is just documenting history because you find in museums, there's a lot of stuff and there'll be some in the, some of the images that I brought where, you know, uh, you document events and you document people. Um, and then that, that becomes important parts of your history. And eventually some of those people are no longer around. And, you know, then, you, you know, it's important to be able to share kind of their history. So you kind of become the holder of some of this, you know, these images and things and came out to Niles Canyon. Um, day one, I was in the Bay Area. I went out to the railroad before I started my new job. And um, 
priorities. You're doing all the priorities, right? You know, um, so there's actually pictures from my first day in the Bay Area here. Um, and I've been a member ever since. Uh, my, my dad and I had a love of steam locomotives. And so this was my chance to get into steam. So I, I've been with the steam department, but they quickly found out that I like to paint uh, and can do lettering. So that's kind of become my specialty within the canyon. Um, although I've done lots of other things. I was a locomotive engineer back east. I've done track work. I've done heavy equipment maintenance, woodworking. I worked on a 1923 Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh caboose, which the museum back east has since finished, uh, the interior of railroad coaches and other things. Um, but, you know, so, but I've always found this balance between kind of getting my hands dirty and meanwhile not having my camera too far away which is even easier now because your iPhone or your cell phone is actually a pretty reasonable camera. So now instead of having one strapped to my hip all the time, I just pull it out of my pocket. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The but. convenience of those. And the other thing cool about phones nowadays is that they're also excellent video cameras. I have yeah. shot a lot of 4k video with my iPhone that ends up, people wouldn't know this just watching the videos on the channel, but a fair amount of it is shot with phones. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. And, you know, so you just keep, you just keep working and, you know, so that's been the thing. So for Niles Canyon, I've just tried to find this balance, you know, between everything. Yeah. Oop. We just lost John. Look at where he's, uh, come, he's come frozen back, there. <laughs> uh, the joys of the internet. It's great while it works. <laughs> yeah. But. I think it's great that you document things. Um, even like at the museum, I, I so treasure the pictures that people took during our building of the people who were involved then. So the photos of the people and the layout. And so it's neat that you think about that and that you are documenting that history. Well, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's important to document <laughs> events and, and, and those become important for a wide variety of things. I mean, they become important um, because you need to, you know, the museum needs, uh, information to get grants or needs, you know, other things that are, are, are real important or, or just wants to share their past and, and share with new people what's been done. And, and then frankly, there's a lot of camaraderie as well. And uh, you grow friends and, you, you know, you get new friends and you lose some old friends and it's important to be able to kind of to share that history. Important so, history. Yeah. And, what would we do if people hadn't photographed the trains in the past, you know? Right. But, like we wouldn't, modeling would be a lot harder if there wasn't a lot of people that went out and photographed it and did well, it the hard way and developed their own pictures. And, and that's even another, I mean, there, there there's so many aspects to the, to the train piece of, or doing stuff for museums where, again, we've had, you know, you consider a lot of your photography to be, you know, a lot of the, the customers of railroad museums are families, right? And then you have, the rail fans you want to promote to, but then you have a whole model community that needs a whole different set of pictures, right? They, they don't necessarily right. want an at speed three quarter wedgie. They want you to climb underneath that Pickering caboose and get me pictures of every last rivet and weld Correct. Um, because I want to replicate that. Right. So then, or I need 16 different angles for that, that uh, generator steam generator sitting on top of the locomotive. Right. So what we've done some of that as well. And you, Again, you try to find different ways to appeal to all different communities as well. Right. So I think you had a presentation with John, right? But he's not. Yeah, here. he's got the keys <laughs> to the kingdom. So I guess we could just keep talking. We'll so just keep gonna, talking. So what? Um, back. So. Oh, now oh, he's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I've been <laughs> I've been listening this whole time, but you know. This Windows. is not the first time I've, I've had trouble with that other computer. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that, but we do have some stuff to share. And I, yeah, can I, I can't wait to see your pictures because Chris, I've seen some and they're amazing. And um, yeah, here it is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we got to really, get to the pictures. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, but no, no problem. Believe me, we've all learned. If nothing else, we've learned over the past two years is how to, how to shuffle technically doing webinars oh, yeah. and meetings yeah. and other things. And it, none of them go off without a hitch. And now I left, I left my water on the other desk. So I'm going to let you start talking about your pictures and I'm going to sneak away and grab my water while you're talking, but no, right. well, you can go to the first one. So, okay. <laughs> well, kind of an ironic twist. So this is, um, this is actually Montclair, New Jersey. This is my hometown. Um, 
This is Upper Montclair Station. Uh, this is, at the time, New Jersey Transit. So we're mid late 1980s here. Um, me as a teenager growing up uh, outside of New York City. Um, ironically, the interesting part is the last remaining example of that, uh, the United Railway Historical Society of Rochester just uh, announced today that the last remaining example of this will be restored. And they just started a fundraising campaign. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> big six axle GEs were what ran through my hometown every day in commuter service. Um, this no, is there's, a, no, there's no lettering on this at all. No, well, yeah, there is not. These were built for the Erie Lackawanna and they were er originally lettered Erie Lackawanna. Um, they later had uh, New Jersey DOT stickers on them, but New Jersey Transit only repainted one or two in their flashy aluminum with the disco stripes on them, but these ran pretty much unlettered. There's actually a tiny little EL logo buried in that at the top of the stairs, that safety first logo. But so this was a yeah. I'm actually sitting on a freight station platform. And this was a place I went as a teenager to kind of sit and take pictures of trains and watch the evening commute roll by. Um, uh, and so this was kind of my hometown uh, where I grew up. And again, I've been doing this. I, I got involved also in railroad museums and historical societies in the 80s. Um, and uh, thank you. Um, uh, and, you know, I, along with the two NRHS chapters, Tri-State and Jersey Central, I was also a member of the New York, Susquehanna and Western Technical and Historical Society and actually worked on the restoration of their RDC when I was in high school before moving to Rochester uh, to go to college. So you can head to the next one. So um, welcome to Rochester. Uh, so this is the Rochester and Genesee Valley Railroad Museum. Um, Originally, uh, an operation of the Rochester chapter of National Railroad Historical Society, the group ultimately left the NRHS about 15 years ago, um, but they have their own railroad. Um, and in there, again, uh, I did a bunch of things and got into painting. So actually that picture on the left of that 45 tonner and those two cabooses, uh, I'm responsible for all the paint and lettering on the 45 tonner. I'm responsible for all the paint on the Penn Central transfer caboose. And I did all the prep work in the interior restoration of the Erie. And then uh, my paint guy at the time said, hey, I'll come out and paint it. And I was not one to say no. Um, so it was actually painted. That was actually painted in the early 90s. Um, and it's still pretty good today, thanks to high quality paint. Um, yeah, I've been doing the paint lettering thing for a long time. But the image on the right actually is me running our Kodak, ex-Kodak Railroad RS1. So um uh, you know, on the right. Um, so thank you, Jennifer. Um, and uh, actually in the distance is our FM of which we have one in the Canyon. So I went from Rochester with a U.S. Army Fairbanks Morse to Niles Canyon with a U.S. Army Fairbanks Morse. Um, <laughs> and then I got into doing some night photography, which I have not done any out here in the past 10 years, but that's all open flash, Graflex flash guns, um, you know, your Luke Skywalker lightsaber, um, I actually have one in the closet behind me. Um, and, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, <laughs> and, uh, um, and so, so that's kind of where I was. And I spent a long time there before again, 2012, um, uh, we kind of picked up ship and, uh, moved out to the Bay area. Um, but I did a lot of the same things for this group as I did, um, you know, uh, as I do here, and even more, I was president and other things of the organization. But it, it's a wonderful museum. They continue um, on. Um, they do lots of operations. Um, it's a great little operation. If you ever find yourself uh, south of Rochester, New York, uh, which is about 300 miles from New York City, by the way, it's western New York. It's up near, you know, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Albany. It's the other side of the state. Um, I didn't, we, we didn't go to New, and that was the thing. You go to New York city all the time. Well, it's 300 miles away, but no. So New York is, is a bigger state. It's certainly not a California. But. That reminds me of times when I've known people who, who are like, Oh, Hey, uh, we're going to come out to LA. We'd like to come visit you. Like dude, you gotta drive <laughs> like six or seven hours to come visit me from LA. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, but I missed my RS1. I used to take care of that locomotive, and sadly, they wouldn't let me put it in my luggage and bring it out to the canyon. But uh, it almost looks like and, and it's, I mean, it, it, it is also from Kodak, for which was my employer for 20 years. So, um, but it's, it's well taken care of. And so, oh, 
that's familiar. Uh, yeah, this is familiar. So this was day one, Niles Canyon. This is uh, July 9th, 2012. Um, I literally flew out to the Bay Area. I left my family in Rochester because I was going to come out and work for a little tiny startup company. We weren't sure we was going to stay started up. So I left my family behind and uh, came out with a suitcase with clothes and my my laptop in a bag and my camera bag, or actually I should say my my camera and um, rented a car and was living in a hotel. And so why not? Might as well do something better than staring at the hotel wall. So this was day one of Niles Canyon. Um, the WP F7, the restored F7 was running. Um, gentleman on the right, uh, whose name is now going to fly out of my head because I'm talking live, was running. And, and actually a mutual friend of mine from Rochester who also lives, Mike Roquet, who lives out here. Mike was actually an engineer on the other train that day, ironically on a black GE80 tonner, of which we have one in Rochester. So I said, great. I flew all the way across the country to watch my friend operate the same locomotive we have back east. Uh, but in any case, he was kind enough to get me up in the cab for a cab ride. Uh, this is actually John Blasick. Um, uh, John has since passed away. So again, this is one of those things where, again, you you document operations and, and people that contribute to your organizations. And then at some point, they become not part of you anymore for a variety of reasons. In one case, John simply it passed away. And it was nice enough to have some images like this that we could, you know, we could share in his memory. Um, and a lot of people, he taught a lot of people how to run locomotives. Uh, certainly at this point, he was perfectly comfortable letting the F7 do what it was designed to do. Um, but it was a lot of fun. So this was kind of day one at Niles Canyon, um, you know, just doing what I like to do, which is kind of document what's going on. So. Yeah, for sure. And head to the next one. So. Uh, you know, luck of the draw. One of the things I also enjoy is trying to find times when the atmosphere and other things, you know, you kind of don't know you're at a museum. Um, our bright side yard isn't necessarily always the cleanest or neatest or railroadest looking yard going, but occasionally a, a little bit of haze from the stack and the sun in the right location. Uh, this is Robert Dollar Company number three. Uh, waiting to pull out and you get something with the kind of talking to the crew that this is one of my favorite images, and this was taken early on. This is probably 2013. Um, yeah, but this image could have been from anywhere in the last decades, and right. you can't, it's timeless. You don't know yeah. when this photo is actually taken. So, so that that's kind of the fun part and a little bit of the challenge, too. I mean, you can argue you have a railroad that's only a couple miles long. Rochester, we only had two and a half, about two and a half miles of railroad, but you still never capture it all. I mean, the interesting part is I've I've been out here 10 years. I've shot, I don't know, 100,000, 200,000 images. Um, and uh, you still don't have it all. You go, oh, I need, a, I need a picture of that piece of equipment or that curve or something. And you realize, no, I don't have it. I, somehow I never managed to be there yet. Um, but uh, anyway, this was This, this is, is beautiful. I love so, the, the sunbeams across the sky. Yeah, it, you know, again... <laughs> just being in the right place at the right time, which again, yeah. having your camera with you. So you can head to the next one, John. Yeah. So. Chris, I don't know if you know this, but I, I do a monthly podcast. That's every month. It's something about, you know, what I've been doing for the, been part of it. There's something called the catch of the month where people send in pictures, dude, why aren't you sending me pictures for that? <laughs> All right. Well, I will. Uh, uh, no problem. And, and then this is another example. So one of the, I mean, we don't shoot black and white film anymore, but, um, and the reason people are not shooting film anymore is part of the reason why I'm in the Bay Area, uh, because my former employer kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller due to people not shooting film. But I've always enjoyed black and white photography. Um, actually, when I was a teenager, black and white was inexpensive. You could buy 100 feet of film. You could spool your own. You could process it. You didn't. Have, you only kind of printed the things you needed. So to learn on black and white was actually um was actually like 24 to 105 uh, favorite lens um at the moment um i'm pretty i'm pretty excited about my 100 to 400 on occasion you'll see some examples of those but i shoot mostly with a 24 to 105 is the range that i shoot in on a currently running a canon r5 uh so this is the all canon equipment um just that's where i landed i actually shot olympus equipment in high school and in college uh, but then this was another one of those situations where you get enough steam and 
two Mali locomotives, pretty rare, right? There's only now five of these running in the United States uh, together, a uh, special event, but you get enough steam with the right freight car in the background. Uh, and again, where are you? What time are you? So timeless. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, one of the other things is people go, well, you get a lot of images. I also volunteer. So one of the best, you know, you, you got to be in it to win it kind of the thing, like it's the lottery, right? If you're there and you're volunteering and you're active and you're part of the crew and you're contributing, you get a lot of opportunity to see things that are a little different than other people and you get opportunities and it, it only comes by spending the time, um, you know, inside the fence kind of so to speak um so a lot of this comes just because of the fact that i'm there uh, you know, there's a lot of images where i would work on be working on restoration and i would wait for the train i'd pick my camera up and go sit on a railroad tie or something else but this was this was pretty neat having the two mallies uh, this is again bright side yard this is beautiful <laughs> if you see pictures of it normally you'd go uh not the most photogenic but again right mood, uh, right, right situation. So, you know, it's interesting too, when you think about it, if, if you're there working on stuff, you know, you might have a job that you're working on where you need to let, let something cool off or let something dry because you're working like painting something, right? Well, what are you going to do while your paint's drying? You yeah. can go take some pictures of, of trains like well, this. And I've also struggled too, that I'm always caught a little bit, right? Cause you are working on stuff and you can't necessarily put that paintbrush down. But boy, that's something kind of unique that really should be documented, right? So I've always kind of struggled with that. And there's also days where I show up and taking pictures becomes more important than doing something, getting dirty, so to speak. Um, so, you know, there have been some people that have said, well, do you do anything around here? I just see you taking pictures. Well, <laughs> I'm taking pictures for a purpose because we need pictures for Facebook or we need pictures for the website or to document something, right? And we. I, I do I, I do our Facebook page, I do our Instagram, I do our website. And a lot of the material, one of the challenges, the same thing to your point, John, like you're an editor of something, right? So you're also a content creator, but you got to create content. And, you know, you get a lot of people to go, I want to be the webmaster. Well, great. It's like editor of the newsletter, the job nobody wants, because your job as newsletter editor is really easy if you get a lot of people sending you a lot of stuff that you get to pick from. But if no one sends you anything, then you have to, well, I've got blank pages I have to fill. I have to go create it. So in some cases, I I'm, I'm I have to wear both hats. I have to be both content creator and the editor as well, because without the content, and we have a real challenge in Niles Canyon in that, I mean, it's true of anywhere, right? I'm sure it's true in your operation too, Michelle. You don't want to be posting pictures with changing leaves in the spring or snow or I mean, you want to be different in Niles right. Canyon. We have brown season and we have green season. You don't have much. <laughs> but you know, you get into the summer and the hills are all golden California brown, you don't want to be really posting nice green hill photos because people right. come from out of state and you know, I, I kind of chuckled because we did a, f a photo charter with Pete Laro and Pete does a great job with his charters. And he came out and he's like, in the summer, to scout. And he's like, look at these beautiful golden hills. We're like, Pete, your charter is going to be in February. They're going to be green. He's like, what? I'm like, we turn green in the winter and brown in the summer. Back east, you turn green in the summer and brown in the winter. In the winter, right. You mean they're not going to be golden? No, they're going to be green, really green. And we were green. But that's your challenge. You can't, you see, you've got to shoot all the different times as well. So you're welcome to move ahead, John. We can. Oh, okay. You know, so, um, and again, unique situations and really wonderful. This is the Southern Pacific Ten, the only existing Kraus Mafi diesel hydraulic, uh, led by PLA or Niles Canyon volunteer Howard Wise. Uh, Howard is a marvelous mechanic, master fabricator, um, master painter, um, and Howard and a bunch of people have been working on this for over ten years. Uh, it is SEMA show quality restoration i mean every detail is attended to along with bob zank who's helped and and they've gotten worldwide support i mean there's people that have come from all over and there's some pictures later um but this was the 9010 on its kind of maiden voyage for the public uh 
Uh, again, in the canyon, uh, places you can't normally get. Uh, this was actually a photo run by, so everybody was on the train was able to get it. But really, a wonderful project um, and something that shows a lot of dedication by a very small team of people, but also a larger group that's really been worldwide up to the point now where they found the original trucks and the Maybach, the rear Maybach Prime Mover has been rebuilt, and it will not only be uh, pretty and here it's being shoved by the 5623 behind it and Howard has it set up that it can run MU control so you can control the trailing locomotive from the, 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 the Krauss cab um, but it will run and move on its own hopefully uh, in the not so distant future with its brand new rebuilt prime mover so uh, pretty exciting um, you know something really different um and, and unique that we've we've got in the canyon when i met it it didn't even have a nose on it right this came mm -hmm. as a, a derelict <laughs> from the, the california state railroad museum and actually one of the guys that's in the steam department he was very young at the time charlie franz and charlie was one of the early people that said i think we really convinced the group that we really needed to preserve what at the time looked like a pretty rusty what well, was a very rusty awful looking hulk of a locomotive but again, had enough foresight to be able to say, you know, I think we can save that. And then Howard and his group has really poured a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this to make it just a, a truly uh, first class restoration. There's something I want to interject here before we move on to the next picture, which is I think that this picture, this piece of equipment really exemplifies or really stresses the point that the Niles Canyon Railway is a museum as much as anything else, because you cannot see this model of locomotive anywhere else in the world. This is the only one. It's like it's like the cab forward at the uh, California State Railroad Museum. You can't see them anywhere else. Yep. So to have something not only preserved, but in this pristine of condition is just amazing. And I think a testament to what the Niles Canyon Railway is. Uh, another great example is something that just happened recently and i don't want to steal your thunder here chris we would need to move on with the slides but i just want to point out the 2479 which is a pacific class uh, southern pacific or a, a southern pacific p10 pacific class locomotive was just recently moved to niles canyon and they're going to not only restore the 2479 to operation but they're going to rebuild the roundhouse that was at lenzen street here in san jose and they're going to also rebuild the uh, turntable in Niles, which is just going to make Niles Canyon Railway even more of a world-class destination in terms of railroad preservation. Yep. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff happening at the Niles Canyon Railway. Yeah, no, it's it's a fun group. And then uh, it's not always, again, as I said, about the equipment. Uh, to me, a lot of times it's really about the people. Um, and this is a good friend of mine, Jeff, who's uh, one of the amazing. members of the, the STEAM department. Um, and uh, this is a huge thrill to me. I, I mean, I grew up loving steam locomotives, but never, you know, you were kind of the kid down on the ground looking, staring up at the cab and watching other people climb up there, right? And then I kind of got to Rochester and we had diesel locomotives. And even there I was out, I mean, I was, I, I was actually in college and I remember we have, the, the Rochester group has Lehigh Valley number 211. It's the only existing hammerhead RS3. It's got the high short hood. And a guy came out one day and said, oh I, oh, I would kill to get up in the cab. And I'm sitting there with the keys in my hand. Not only that, I knew how to start it. And I looked at him. I said, do you want to see the cab and do you want to hear it run? Um, and the nice part about Niles Candy, and I came out, I'm, you know, I joined the steam department. I'm, I'm willing and I do get greasy at times, or usually I'm painted, covered in paint dust. But you get to kind of now climb up in the cab and be part of, of the experience and, and also document. Um, I started actually taking a lot of the guys in the steam department carried cameras early on, little pocket cameras. And I was there about two years and they're all like, out oh, of hell with it. We'll just leave our cameras home. We've got you. Um, my <laughs> part of that was, and everybody's got cell phones. So the, the playing field is certainly leveled. Um, but it is a lot of fun to be able to kind of document your, your fellow volunteers and your friends. Uh, and I thank them for being willing to kind of let me stick my camera in their face a lot of times because, um, you know, you, this is serious business. You are running a railroad with people on there. It's not something anybody takes lightly. And again, you, you know, but it's, it's fun to be able to kind of get up and be able to document different parts and be welcome up in the cab 
you know, and again, that's part of, you know, being in it to win it kind of thing of, of you know, volunteering and being part of, of the operation. And, and I mean, there's still groups that, you know, you're, you're jealous of. I mean, I, I watched them running on the Blue Mountain and Redding Blue Mountain in Northern now. I know it is the Blue Mountain and Redding. Redding 2102, the big 484 Northern. And the, that's the that's the 15-year-old kid that wants to be in the cab. That 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 class of engine is really kind of what cemented me. In 1976, the Freedom Train came to New Jersey with 2101 in the lead, then engine number one. And the next day, it actually came roaring through my hometown. And I remember my father grabbing my sister and I, throwing us in the back seat of our 65 Buick Riviera and him violating every <laughs> every law possible uh, using all of the 404 V8 in that Riviera to get us to the crossing to watch that thing roar through town. Um, and, and that kind of cemented it to me as a five-year-old. So it, it, it dates back pretty far. So wow, uh, you can jump to the next image. Yeah. Uh, That's a great picture of Jeff, by the yeah. way. And again, uh, people. So uh, bottom right, uh, Kent Hedberg, uh, our seen one of our, you know, now I think our road foreman of engines, um, just a really nice picture. Kent was a conductor for many years and him and his wife are really truly marvelous people. Um, just a fun picture. And then up in the left, the, the gentleman in the KM, the black KM shirt is, is, is Rob Fern. Rob comes from the UK. Uh, he's actually a Maybach expert and Rob, uh, I, I don't know him that well, but I've, I've met him on several occasions. Uh, he has taken more than one vacation um, where he literally has just come from the UK to Niles Canyon to work on the 9010. So his whole vacation was, I'm going to go stick my head inside the prime mover this month and see what's going on with it, or I'm going to help Howard with something. So this was again during the 9010's introduction. Uh, I think it's Bill Stimmerman is the lead machinist on the 9010 to his left to and just a whole conversation of, uh, of Maybach history and why, uh, why, why this and why that, but again, very international and just kind of an interesting, uh, another way to kind of capture the people. Um, you can go ahead. Um, and again, just more angles, uh, again, Charlie coming out with the number three and, and then this gentleman on the right, him and his wife showed up at Sonol all bedecked in their period gear in their 1920s Chevy pickup. I mean, literally with like junk in the back. I mean, not car, pickup truck. And they pulled up and they walked out and all of a sudden he's talking to Jeff and they're having this very spirited conversation in front of the three. Um, they ultimately brought the truck around. Sadly, I had to, I had to go, I had family business, so I didn't get the picture of the truck next to the locomotive, but um, you know, crank start, you know, uh, but him and his wife were all in period gear. So it's so kind of one of those uh, uh, fun situations where just the right people show up at the right time. Um, and this is up in Sonol and then the, the three coming out of the, the engine house. So, and then uh, the man in the red shirt. So Henry Chandler, Henry is our, one of our long-term members, firemen. Um, the image on the right was actually a winter rail special. And I was actually shooting video of the, the four departing early in this cold I mean, it was February or whatever morning. And I watched this image evolve and I went, I want that. My, my still photographer took over and I dropped the video camera and grabbed my still camera. Um, uh, <laughs> because it just was not going to do an HD. And again, that's another one of my favorite. And again, that's bright side coming out of the, you know, the sh car shop lead, which most other times you wouldn't. And then the same thing is true. Uh, that was the morning on the left, uh, Henry climbing into the cab at about 4.30 a.m. Uh, we get started in steam locomotives kind of early some mornings, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but climbing up to, to climb aboard the engine to get started for the day. And we kind of lucked out because the Southern Pacific diesel was sitting in front of it, providing all the backlighting that, but you can't kind of tell. Um, so again, just fun situations, but situations because you're, you're there at four 30 in the morning, greasing. The mm -hmm. What a memory and what a photo to go with it. So, <laughs> um, and again, just another one of those, uh, we actually were running some, so this is Quincy railroad number two. 
Uh, it is now, you know, shut down. We it ran out of flu time, and we we've got other priorities. It's it's safe, you know, kept safe in Niles Canyon, um, uh, and someday may be restored. It, it certainly was my favorite of the three when I came out. There was the two, three, and the four. Um, uh, but again, this is a Niles yard, uh, and and just another one. We were actually running some uh, mixed trains, so we decided we would try to do mixed trains. For, and they're pretty popular, you know, one coach with a caboose and, and a couple freight cars for the public, uh, something different, right? You're always looking for some reason to bring people back. Um, you know, if they, you know, they've ridden once or twice, they may not be, you know, they may go, oh, I don't want to ride the same thing over again. So uh, this was just changing ends in Niles Yard. There's a, to your point, John, there's a turntable in bridge in that picture now from Lenzen that's been dropped off probably smack dab in the middle of that picture. So something else that you'll yeah. have to deal with, but uh, I haven't been up there yet since they moved all that stuff, but I did document them moving it out of the fairground, the locomotive out of the fairgrounds yeah. uh, on a hot August day. Boy, let me yeah, tell you. And I, I was, I was there the, I was there the following day and documented right. its arrival. So I didn't document the turntables arrival. Sadly, that job thing got in the way, but um you know, yeah, uh, don't they know your priorities, man? You yeah, gotta, well, you try, but you know, yeah, don't you gotta, they know how important gotta, we are? Um, and this was another fun image. Uh, actually, this <laughs> this was the last time we operated before COVID, and that's not the reason the image is interesting. It rained that day, and it rained pretty hard. But if you look right at the end of the lettering on the tender, there's this little kid sitting in our the end of our open car with his hood up. He was there the entire trip from Niles all the way to Sonol. He stood out there with his dad in the pouring rain uh, in absolute awe of the steam locomotive in front of him. And he was there the entire time. He never left in the pouring rain. And it just, to me, was kind of neat to watch and nice to see, you know, again, the future generations that have an interest in what we do, uh, an interest in trains, and, and hopefully will also, you know, have an interest in volunteering. Uh, Cause that's a, a, you know, that's important. Right. So. And, you know, it's not always about the front. Um, sometimes it's about the rear or, or the switching. So again, right side yard. Um, luckily our steam crews usually look like steam crews. Um, they're pretty good at, at looking, you know, a period appropriate most of the time. And they were, we were just switching out in the morning. This is a fruit grower's wood-sided reefer car, refrigerator car. I know that well because I actually rescued one in Rochester and had it trucked from Buffalo to Rochester. So I know this breed of uh, railroad car quite well. Um, but again, just another kind of atmosphere kind of switching shot that mm -hmm. you just happen to be there and you happen to be in the right spot, um, you know, again, to, to be able to kind of grab that mood. So. You know, it's funny. I recognize all the places from all the shots because I'm that familiar with the line. Yeah. And, you know, as, as much as I would like to, I just don't have the time to go up and be there as much as you are. So I really appreciate these shots. Well, I mean, well, that's the whole thing. You, you wind up, I mean, I'm, I'm an active volunteer there. I mean, I'm there pretty much every Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also out a lot of Sundays when you used to see my orange car. I've now that's been handed down to my daughter. Um, so now everybody's really confused because the guy in the little orange Pontiac vibe isn't running around anymore. Um, not as bit well, I traded it for a red one, so I guess I'm still quite as visible. Well, I could bring the black one as well. Which well no, you're, you're still so. visible because you're the guy with the big camera. Yeah, I'm the guy with the big camera. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you go out and again, I shoot for, for, for marketing. Um, I have stuff on Instagram. I have stuff on Facebook. I currently do not sell my photography. I, I guess I probably should consider it, but I, you know, it's one of those where I've, I, I've just kind of always done it as a passion. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff you see on Facebook, I'm not even credited. Uh, I, my watermarks are probably in the picture somewhere, but um, I've always, a lot of times have tended to you know, just let the images speak for the museum and not speak for me. It's not about, you know, boosting my ego. It's about, you know, d demonstrating the museum. So um, that that is part of, of some of the stuff, you know, that I've done. It's, it's a hobby. I mean, this is not what I do for a living. I'm not a photographer. Um, oh, oh, but you are. But you are. <laughs> well, I, am, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't earn a living off of it. it it's my creative out. 
And believe me, I can paint big railroad equipment, but I can't draw. And anybody that models and can paint little models, uh, you're, uh, that I, I work well in 12 inch to one foot scale. After that, forget about it. I'm completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a lot of admiration for people that can work at HO or N or any of that, even G. Um, I'm a, I'm a buy to run kind of guy in terms of modeling. Um, yeah. but again, you know, different things. And sometimes it's about the details. Uh, the picture on the left was number two's last day in operation, last day to shine, right? This was the last time it was in steam that night. We backed it into the shop, dropped the fire and it's been cold ever since. Um, so again, just kind of those important moments. Image on the right uh, kind of marries. Uh, I found a couple lanterns that we had up, cleaned them up, got them running. This was one of our photo charters, so hung one on the back of the Pickering caboose. You can see it aside a couple of uh, the collection over here. These are mine. That one belongs to the museum. But again, just trying to marry and also add uh, some feel uh, and, and trying to make things uh, more period and more appropriate. Um, and I've always done that. And I've had colleagues and vol fellow volunteers in Rochester and here, um, you know, that, that really add, I, I had a great experience last year at the Cumbrus and Toltec. You were there too, John. I mean, when they, uh, in Chama, I mean, a couple of the younger guys literally had all of the, all of the switch lanterns lit in the entire yard with kerosene lanterns. Um, you don't see that. I mean, that's not part of what you see anymore. And I thought that was just a really wonderful touch. Um, and they were both had, you know, six inch bell bottom lanterns or five and a half, three ace when the trains came in. And I, I just thought that added uh, just so much to the atmosphere and, and to the event itself and kind of adding that level of, of, of appropriateness and detail. So it was really kind of important. Um, and then, you know, early morning or late at night, uh, the top, again, is the number four leaving for a charter very early in the morning. And no one else on the charter got these images because no one else was in, the, was in the yard except for those of us on the crew that were crazy enough to have showed up to help get it ready. Um, and then the bottom, we had fun a couple of years ago, many years ago, we brought out the two and the four and pulled our train of lights for one weekend with it. And uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to ride. Um, I actually rode the trip after this one um, with the two on the front, uh, basically, and they allowed it to do most of the work. The four was there just to, but you had 14 cars behind that little Alco and it was giving it all it had. And the crew had a marvelous time that night and it was fun to watch them work together um, and, and kind of document parts of it to the best of your ability in a dark locomotive cab. Um, but that to me was uh, a lot of the benefits of the blood, sweat and tears that goes into volunteering and questioning your, your sanity of why am I doing this for free? Um, which I think we've all had. Um, but, you know, being able to be in that cab that night and watching this locomotive work and the crew work was, was definitely payoff for a lot of that. So, uh, it's that photo could be anywhere on the planet. Like it looks like another country with the palm trees and the Yeah, well that was a Southern Pacific <laughs> thing, right? They would plant palm trees near <laughs> their stations so that I mean, I'm not a Southern, I'm a, I'm an Eastern kid, so I'm good with New York Central Erie. I'm learning my SP stuff, but my understanding is that was one of their kind of signature things that they did was to plant palm trees near their stations so that you yeah. knew that their stations stood out, right? And Niles continues that kind of tradition even though for me, it kind of looks a little odd. Um, uh, and, but again, you know, not always about the front. Don't, you know, don't necessarily turn your back when the train rolls by because I just want to picture the locomotive. Again, another one of those early morning runs, uh, but with a period freight train, with an appropriate caboose, with uh, an appropriate crew member aboard, and you get some pretty interesting images um, yeah. Again, you got a highway right to your right. I'm not out in the middle of nowhere. There's a two lane highway to my right. But again, if you do it right, you can kind of bury, bury reality and kind of go into what was right. Yeah, this is a great chance to make a public service announcement. When you go to do photo lines, you know, run bys or whatever, that kind of thing. 
you have to remember that some people are trying to get shots like this. So even though the train has just passed, you still shouldn't go walking across the tracks to go get back to your car to chase it to the next shot because yeah. – Someone could have really bombed your sh your uh, shot here, Chris, and really messed the whole thing up. <laughs> yep. And and for those wondering what the si inside of a Krauss Maffe cab looks like, uh, this is it. So this is 9010 in Niles, um, along with its interesting, all of its gauges. Um, uh, it's all done a period appropriate. Um, all the gauges, the sun visors are all from the original manufacturer in Germany, all brand new. Um, it has since gotten even more of its windows in. It's got a 12 notch throttle to my understanding of which, or 16 notch, 16 notches, I guess, where every other throttle notch works for the, to control the trailing locomotives in the way they have it set up now. But, uh, and there's about a, a zillion dials and controls behind me on the wall. Uh, we'll have to share a picture of that sometime, but again, just, uh, the color of cool. the the colors are all appropriate, are all proper. So the color scientist in me uh, appreciates that. Um, you know, getting color right is really important in the work that I do. So, but anyway, kind of neat. And again, you know, one of those chances to, to see something a little out of the ordinary or very out of the ordinary. Yeah, that's something you don't see every day, which is something that I harp on on this channel all the time. So, right. and then this kind of starts a series of what has Chris painted, of which it's not a complete list, but. Um, my first project, painting project, was actually Clover Valley Lumber Company number four. So I did all the paint work on it, and I did all the lettering work uh, with some help um, on the tank. Um, and I actually made those clovers are removable. Uh, we had a little fun at the first run by uh, when it actually came out from Winter Rail. It left the, the shop without the clovers, and on one of the run bys, we put them on to which, you know, it went by the photo line to about 50 photographers staring down at their backs of their cameras. Going, that thing was not there the last run. No, it wasn't there. They're magnetic. <laughs> um, but again, some of the, 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 you know, this is kind of the, the bread and butter of what I've done for Niles Canyon. So uh, this is a couple of years after it was painted. Um, I, I also now get the pleasure of washing it. Um, we do try to <laughs> Be somewhat authentic in the look, but it is important every so often to get the canyon grime off of it. It's pretty dusty in Niles Canyon, so um, it's not necessarily, you know, we're not waxing the SEMA quality, but it looks at least like we didn't, like, leave it in the dirt for days on or months on end. So um, this Robert Dollar Company number three. I also painted and lettered this, so that's in full paint and lettering actually carrying flags that my mother sewed for me. So there's oh, a little no way. bit. And, uh, and the awnings, uh, the awning cover she sewed for me as well. So a little bit of contri contribution from my mother as well. Um, but again, another kind of fun project, although steam locomotives are just miserable to paint. Um, uh, but uh, really pleased with the way this came out. And uh, it's still fully operational. We've just been concentrating on the, on the four and the seven as of recent. Uh, it's a neat little engine. I'm not even sure. I'm, I'm learning something here today too, Chris. I'm not sure that I knew you had painted these steam engines. That's really cool. Yeah. So, no, I, I did the four when I first got there. That was my first. And the, I, I was peeling the masking off of that. And that's where I learned the name of every department head in Niles Canyon who showed up and said, I hear you like to paint, <laughs> uh, which my response was, do you like to prep? I love to paint, but that prep thing's a real bugger. Um, yeah. uh, to which they all said, no, that's your job. I'm like, no, yeah. but I, I literally got a lifetime of work in my first like two months. They're like, we have seven passenger cars you can paint. We've got a rail bus you can paint. So every department head showed up and, you know, the new guy knows how to paint. Go get, go sink your teeth into him. But uh, <laughs> yeah. the steam department already had my attention. So uh, to that end. Did you end up helping Wes? Uh, is that the 330 there? Did you yes, help him? I, paint I, so Wes Swift did all the preparation work. This was actually, uh, this was the, the, uh, the glory paint job. All I had to do was show up with my spray gun and have Wes drive me around uh, with a man lift, and I did all the painting. Um, okay, cool. They did all the prep work. Uh, they had somebody else lined up to paint it. That person was not able to paint it. Um, so in the bottom of the ninth, uh, you know, I, I volunteered to do it. Um, actually, one of my fellow volunteers said, I'll pay you a thousand dollars to do it. And I said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. If you feel strongly, you can donate a thousand dollars to the organization. 
Um, but I will paint it no problem. And, and I did all the paint work uh, on this for Wes, um, again, just because I was available. Um, and we kind of had to get it done because it was needed for the 150th transcontinental celebration. So they were kind of running short of time. But it was great. I just showed up literally with my spray gun and my bunny suit. And uh, he drove me around in the man lift. And all I had to do was paint, which was great. I didn't have to spend weeks or days or months sanding and wiping. It was all ready for me to go. So it was it was really the, the best of all, all possibilities. And then in the bottom is again, Clover Valley number four, but is McLeod Railway Fire Car number 1711. And that was my second project. I did all the paint and lettering on that. And we did a, a lot of work and it got an all brand new deck, all new uh, things. Um, Sadly, we did not paint it in super high quality material. So it's it's pink now because I painted it. Everybody's like, oh, that's going to be too bright. I'm like, let Mother Nature get hold of that elk and enamel. And now, what is it, eight years later, it's pink. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, um, but, you know, that was one of my second kind of paint project and lettering project was doing the fire car. And I've done a bunch of freight cars since, including the UP Gone. Um, uh, and again, just another great collaboration. Uh, and his name is going to again fly out of my head. But uh, I met one of the 9010 team. He lives in Southern California. He's one of the co-authors. Actually, I should just look over here because if I get my uh, if I get my my Southern Pacific lettering book, Dick Harley. There it is. Um, I met Dick on one of the 9010 uh, uh, excursions, and I don't know somehow we got talking about what do you do, and I do paint and lettering. He goes, Oh, I wrote the lettering book. Um, and, and Dick and I have formed a really wonderful collaboration. He is certainly an expert, uh, one of the experts in railroad lettering and has replicated a lot of it electronically. And he was kind enough to do all the artwork for that UP gone. And then I took his artwork and cut it out and applied it and paint. I painted the gone first and then I did all the lettering, um, but I, you know, it was a great collaboration. Uh, again, another one of those things where you don't necessarily have to be in the same place as the equipment. Uh, he's in, lives in Southern California, um, but was just kind of willing to, to help supply me artwork. Um, and I didn't have any fear that it wasn't accurate or wasn't right. Um, and I just had to get it on the car right and get it. And so that was a, a really wonderful collaboration. And we've done the same, our Southern Pacific box car for which I don't have, um, you know, pictures in here, but I've done the 40 inch SP logos and all the lettering on that. And that's all of Dick's uh, artwork as well. I, I chuckled because one of the, somebody came by at one point. And I think that lettering is wrong. <laughs> uh, I think you're barking up the wrong tree, but that's okay. You can believe whatever you want. Um, I don't think so, but okay. Uh, I remember when you were posting pictures of this one on Facebook, I don't remember if it was your yeah, the, 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 the Union Pacific or the Pac-Man or this yeah. this Union Pacific gone on the left here. Uh, I remember looking at it, going, "Boy, it sure would be cool if it said Onion Pacific." But that's just me; I'm goofy that way. <laughs> and um, I, I actually created the oh, Onion. Pacific. The I, and, and it said Pac-Man at one point too, with a little with dots too. Um, uh, Twenty years of Kodak, I'm pretty good at Photoshop. Um, <laughs> And this has kind of become another one of this is I don't know if you want to call it a signature view or something. Um, the joys of long telephoto lenses, and even better when you put them on an APS-C kind of digital SLR. Your 400 millimeter turns into a 760 millimeter. Although these were both taken at 400, um, you kind of so the left is actually the Laro charter, and everyone else was up by the bridge. And there's a curve after Farwell. And if you stand outside that curve, you are head on with them coming over the bridge. You are perfectly safe. I'm not in the gauge. I'm way off the gauge. I'm where they can see me. Um, and But with that much telephoto, you get them roaring across the bridge. So that's the number seven. And then the same is true uh, east, of, east of Brightside near Sonol. There's a a gradual curve into the last straightaway. And if you back your way down there, you can be well off to the side, but it looks like he's going to run right over me in about a thousand feet, which he's not. Um, but again, just kind of some different places. Um, and it's always a challenge, right? There, There's a lot of the railroad that's in the canyon. Um, mm -hmm. so it's always a challenge to find interesting places to photograph where you, because you, you know, 
you can't go hauling into the canyon to take pictures um, all the time. Usually that's only when we do charters and things when you can go by go by train. Um, so again, it's trying to find some 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 signature looks or things that are interesting. So. And then the top was actually last week. So the top was uh, we hosted the Southern Pacific Historical and Technical Society Conventioneers. Uh, so we had the two Black Widow diesels amued and an all Southern Pacific train. Um, one of the challenges is we are decorating for our train of lights. So the combine and the twin unit already had their Christmas lights on. Uh, and our crew was nice enough to light up the ones on the twin unit. So luckily they flash. Uh, and this was taken when the neon green lights were actually off. But uh, this was Farwell, where we, again, offloaded them for a, a photo run by. But, uh, you know, again, with the Southern Pacific uh, telephone booth in the right. Um, and, and then the bottom was the 150th. So we had a little fun. We spun the seven around and we put the two engines nose to nose with the Niles sign behind it. And then there's another picture where we have the whole steam crew on there. So, again, just another one of those. Uh, chances, you know, kind of do some unique things that when you're on the crew and an active volunteer, um, you kind of get a chance to participate in. This was not for the public. This was something we did for fun for ourselves um, just because we could. <laughs> so are you backed up to the UP main there or did yeah. you have to go across it? Uh, well, I'll say I'm backed up to it. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go straight here. <laughs> And then again, uh, the 9010, actually, they, they, this was the day after um, the big public celebration. Uh, the crew decided that they had still had some VIPs and things in town and that people hadn't really gotten a chance to really see the locomotive. So they took it back out again for fun. Um, in this case, they amued it to the 5472. The SD9 is behind it, providing the motive power. But they were operating it in between the, the regular runs, which is on the right. And again, this is down in Niles. So again, just another, you know, you wouldn't have known about it unless you were there kind of thing. Um, but, but a chance to photograph something pretty unique. Hey, I know these. Yeah, you know these. So, and, and, and John's been kind enough to come out and document a lot in, uh, of the different things that our group has done. Uh, we are actively restoring Southern Pacific 1744, a Valley Mally. Um, and uh, one of the things was we have the driver tires needed to be replaced and the driver sent driving centers needed to be uh, needed to be worked on. Um, so we actually got built a ring of fire uh, and in Brightside Yard, we spent a couple weekends removing tires and John's got a marvelous video that documents that process and with interviews from our steam <laughs> Um, but that's the ring of fire uh, heating up the tire. You basically expand the tire and then the theory has it, it falls off. Uh, we coaxed it with uh, hammers, uh, but we did ultimately get all six of them off. Um, and then to basically get them ready for new tires, they needed to be turned and you need large tools to do that. We do not have tools of that caliber, but the California state railroad museum does. Um, and, uh, a lot of members of the different organizations have formed a lot of wonderful partnerships and friendships over the years. Um, so that is actually our contractor, Stathi Pappas of Stockton Locomotive Works. Uh, he is also now the general manager of the skunk train up in Willits. Um, but we had hired Stathi to do the work. Um, so he at the time was in Colorado. Uh, he was chief mechanical officer for the Cumbers and Toltec. We hired him to do the work and CSRM was well, was kind enough to let us use their facility and their equipment. So this is actually in the Sacramento shops, uh, the SP Sacramento shops on CSRM equipment with our contractor. And, and John got to document this as well. So kind of neat to be able to kind of be back where some of this work originally took place. Um, and the work on 1744 is ongoing. It will not stop um, even with the 2479. Um, so, and it's currently a frame right now. The boiler is actually in Stathi's shop getting rebuilt. Um, ultimately, when we get it back, we'll have pretty much what's a brand new, all new boiler, except for the tube. Um, all new, it'll have all new sheets, all new stay bolts. Uh, it, it'll be really a, a wonderful uh, boiler for us. Um, so anyway, uh, again, uh, another interesting chance to document something that's 
truly out of the ordinary. Um, yeah. So yeah. I want to mention real quickly, just so that people know, if you're new to the channel or watching this on a replay or whatever, uh, Chris alluded to this. There is a video about the, the Ring of Fire uh, incident, if you want to call it that, episode of the 1744 uh, project. And then there is another episode in the Sacramento Steam Shops where Stothy is there running this gigantic lathe that actually was built for Atlas or Atlas missiles, some kind of missiles. Yeah, Atlas missiles. To, turn, to, turn missile, to turn missile nose cones. Yeah, so uh, those are here on the channel. If you want to look for them, just search for the number 1744 on this channel and you'll find both of those videos. They're very interesting. Uh, so here we go. And then, you know, the big event of recently was the movement of SP2479 um, from the Santa Clara Fairgrounds to our railroad and, and us taking possession of it. Um, so this was its first move. It had just been basically set on our railroad east of here, uh, and this was its first big move. We had stopped in Sonol to check journals, and it was on its way to, to Brightside Yard. So uh, it, it is also an active restoration project. A lot of the volunteers from the CTRC have come along with it um, and, uh, and are actively working on it as well. So we've, we've kind of added to our volunteer core. Um, and so it, it's exciting to see that. And, and a, there's a lot of excitement about it as well. So I think that's going to help our steam department get both of those projects done. Having the guys from the CTRC. Yeah, certainly so. having more hands helps. And, and we're always looking for more. I mean, that we always, you know, and anything, right. And you don't need to be, uh, you know, a 30 years of machinist or whatever. There's, they're, they're, you know, we, we say it all the time in museums, there's jobs for everybody. And there, there really are, um, you know, uh, there's stuff that anyone can contribute to and really make a difference. Um, yeah. So so that's, you know, if you've got some spare time, um, you know, for anything, I mean, Steam Department or anything, I mean, any of the museums around us, Niles Canyon's one, uh, you know, Michelle's organization, again, it, it, you know, find your local railroad museum and see how you can lend a hand. Even if it's taking pictures, I mean, that, that's an important part or graphic design, right? You can never seem to have enough, you know, people that can help you make brochures or interesting handouts or signs or, or whatever. That is true. Or, and that's expensive too, to hire and, that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate. Like, <clears throat> the lettering I do, I, I we have a stencil cutter and, you know, I found out years ago, I bought one in Rochester and we bought one here for the museum here. And it, it really, you know, you, you you find out that investing a few thousand dollars, but having someone that can do it, um, it really adds to your ability to, to do things. So I, I think that it's worth mentioning too that I, I don't usually use myself as an example for things like this, but I will this time because I've been a member of the Pacific Locomotive Association for damn near 15 years now, and I've never been able to go up there and help hands on, you know, get inside a boiler and clean stuff out or paint things like you do, Chris. But I do like to think that the contributions that I make of publicizing stuff and using this channel as a platform to share what happens up in Niles Canyon with people, hopefully that helps the organization. At least it's my, that's why I do it. You know? And even, I mean, even people just sharing things on their own Facebook site or whatever, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that can help an organization as well. Yeah. Or, you know, a little donation here and there also goes a long way, right? You, you add up a lot of $25 donations and it adds up pretty quick. Yeah. Um, just a little thing. We will be running our train of lights again this year. Uh, tickets go on sale uh, October 1st at 10 a.m. Um, but this was a fun image. This was actually inspired by another photographer. So this was a photographer inspiring me. He had taken a picture like this. Um, and I literally ran out the next night and the, the, the lens is sitting on my wallet. Um, but I, I was so, I thought, wow, that is such a clever image. I wanted to see if I could replicate it. And I did. Um, so, um, this is all the way back. I, I think I was actually leaving the next day to fly to Korea. So I had like one shot at the trophy and it worked out. But again, this is one of those things where it's also fun, you know, the stuff you do, John, and other photographers as well. It's always fun to see other people's viewpoints of the same subject. Again, you only have a few miles of railroad, but everybody looks at it a little bit different. And, and so that's kind of an interesting chance to, to do that. So, um, but TOL is coming up. So 
Um, yeah, maybe we should tell people what the Train of Lights is because everybody, not everybody. Yeah, so the so Train of Lights is is basically a fourth. I think we're running fourteen cars. Uh, it's decorated inside and out with Christmas lights. Um, we run all through November and December. We run uh, a four thirty train out of Niles. So we kind of start in the twilight and go into the dark, and then there's a 7.30 departure from Sanol. Uh, the train's all decorated. It takes about 4,000 volunteer hours to decorate the train. So our, our volunteers have actually started now to decorate the train, to have it ready for – and there's two baggage cars that hold all of the decorations that are put on the cars. Um, but it's a great kind of Bay Area holiday tradition. The museum's been doing it for – 15 or 20 years. Um, uh, I will say tickets are, can be somewhat hard to get to, um, you know, and that's not, I mean, one of the challenges today with tickets is everybody's using internet ticket sales. You don't have to sleep in a parking lot anymore, which is what we did in college. Um, I'm dating myself, but, um, <laughs> now, uh, you know, every, everybody is sitting in the checkout line at Safeway on their cell phone can order tickets. So yeah. you still have to explain to people that, you know, there's, there's millions of people around here and everybody has equal access to the, the tickets. So um, I guess it's, you know, shop early, shop often, but uh, it is a lot of fun. Um, the other thing I will highlight is that we actually run two trains for volunteers. So I believe it's for every 30 hours you volunteer, you get a free ticket. Um, up to six tickets. Um, I've managed to get six tickets since I've been a member of the organization. Um, but it, it, the train is all volunteers. And you can, you know, you have your six tickets. If there's extras, you can buy them. Um, but we do run it so that you as a volunteer don't necessarily have to buy, you know, or compete with the public. And if you want to run and we run a Niles train and we run a Sonol train. So it is a marvelous chance. And again, it's one of those kind of perks of volunteering. Um, that, you know, you, you just don't have to worry about it. You're, you'll be included in the members train if you, you put enough time in. So. Something else that might be worth mentioning here is that if someone is interested in, go, in going as a member of the public and they can get their hands on tickets uh, to do it, because this event actually funds, I, as I understand it, most of the operating costs this for the railroad the for the entire year. year. For the organization, yep. So yeah. it is definitely the, the primary fundraiser for the organization. Yeah. So what um, happened here? You looked like you were driving on the side of. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm standing. I'm not driving and taking pictures at the same rate. I, I, I actually, again, uh, one of those things, um, uh, I, I follow a, a, a car photographer named Larry Chen. Uh, he's on Instagram, YouTube and everything. Um, and his big thing is a lot of pan photography. So, again, you know, you try to pick up interesting techniques from other photographers. And so I've occasionally pl pl played around a little bit with shows slow shutter speed panning. Um, and so this was just one a couple of weeks ago with the number four coming into Sonol. He's only moving at about less than 10 miles an hour, but you drop your shutter speed down and turn your motor drive up and, and see what you come out with. See if you can match the speed of the train. So, um, but you know, uh, I guess this is one of those things where I've got two or three slides left, right? You're supposed to, um, you know, kind of say like, oh, the hour's gone like a blur uh, or some clever thing like that, right? As I'm looking at the clock, having to get to work. Um, uh, <laughs> but again, this is just another chance to do something different and capture the same subject a little bit differently. So, and then this was kind of fun. This was during the Pete Laro charter. And I actually should have put the, the other one where I replaced the spout of the can with a lightsaber for the may the fourth be with you um <laughs> it's on our facebook page if you want to go see it I was okay that's it. awesome <laughs> but uh you know you gotta let all the steam out i guess um, oh boy this was kind of a, a fun a fun thing that pete is also one of his kind of signature things are these night photography sessions so uh just kind of fun and and steve butler there who's in the in the shadows was kind enough to be the was, was helping us from out of town uh, with some of the crewing and things. Steve is a steam mechanic um, and was kind enough to kind of stand there and get steamy for about five or 10 minutes. So uh, kind of fun. Good shot. Mm -hmm. Oh and my then, goodness. You know, again, out of here mm -hmm. with a blur, right? So this is actually the train mm -hmm. of lights. This is bright side yard again, uh, just a different way to look at 
uh, what is a 14 car uh, train full of lights. So it is, um, you know, not the most uh, historic thing to photograph, but it is an interesting challenge um, to come up with kind of unique ways to, to yeah. photograph it. So quite, talk quite, about quite, color. Quite You've colorful. got color in that. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. like it. A few thousand lights. So I think that's where I end right now. So yeah. So let me close this. This was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, amazing that photography, good. Chris. Really yeah. good stuff. We went a little bit over time, but I think it was worth it because that was a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I greatly appreciate the chance to, you know, to come hang out and, and talk a little bit about uh, kind of what we do and, 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 you know, volunteering and things like that. And, and, you know, and kind of combining different passions, right. It's, you know, the, the, right. kind of have a canned subject you can, you can apply your passion to and, 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 you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think uh, I can speak for both of us when I say we appreciate you taking the time, mm -hmm. you know, for yeah, yeah. No, uh, on. It's, it's love to have you back for more photos again. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, no, I'll, anytime. Let me know. You made us a way to month. <laughs> a few hundred thousand more, none of which any of are that good, believe me. Well, I you were gonna say two hundred thousand dollars. There's a lot of chaff in amongst the treasures, but uh, there's also a lot of just documentation photos. I mean, the funny part is I go to railroad museums, I'm like, oh, that's a really cool step box. You know, like, why are you taking a picture of a step box? Because that's a really cool step box. You know, that's a really cool display, right? You take all these odd people. Are like, why are you taking a picture of that? Uh, there was one. I was at the Pacific Bus Museum, and the, 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 like somehow they have a door labeled. It's and I forget the guy's name. Oh, Alan Fong's door. And I'm taking a picture. And this one walks. Through, why did you take a picture of that door? I'm like, because I work with a guy named Alan Fong, and I wanted to send him the picture because here's his door. I found his door. Um, but, you know, you, you find silly things like that, but there's also a lot of that kind of documentary photos. Um, you know, you can see every corner of RD3's boiler with all of the the the, the stencil marks on it too. So you know, the the real question though, Chris, is what did Alan say when you showed him that picture? Is like, oh, I've been looking for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the bigger thing is to make sure not only you take them, but you actually give them to the people that need them, right? That, mm -hmm. that's, that's perennially the problem, right? All right, I took all those pictures. Where are they? I don't know. Um, so, but I'm getting a whole, I do a whole it. clinic on how to organize pictures. When you have that many, you must have to right. organize them because yeah, I'm not as good as it as I should be. But um, well, I know I asked you for a picture of something no, once, and you, well, you found it's it. interesting because you, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of you know on Facebook you'll note that all, I put actually in the caption I put the date when the photo was taken. That is immensely useful when you go back and look for things because all my photos, all the folders have dates on them, so I can actually. I actually start with like my Facebook page or my Instagram page or my well Facebook more than Instagram. And I'm like, all right. Oh, that was 2017, you know, March 5th, 20. All right. Now you just go right back and find it. Um, th that's become the bigger, the biggest help that I think I've done for myself is put the date on them just so I can, because in theory, the date is buried inside of them, but I believe Facebook is nice enough to wipe all that metadata away. So yeah. it's not that you can download your own photo and look at it and figure out when it was taken. So Right. Right on. So, well, sir. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, I know, you gotta, I know you got to get to work. So, yeah, I got to jump in my truck and go and go give another presentation for uh, for work. So, hopefully, good we luck with that one. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hopefully, we didn't wear you out. And no, you it's all right. One more, you know, another diet Pepsi, and I'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, um, a long haul. Yeah. Again, thanks for your time and thanks for sharing. And I hope to see you up there sometime soon. Uh, it was inspirational. Oh, right. someone, in the, someone in the chat just said that inspiring Bernard from mini prints. So thanks. Thanks, Chris. Bye. You take care, man. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Well, that was great. I, that was great. You know, he, he made it worthwhile <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I've wanted to have Chris on the channel to do an interview of some sort or something for a long time. And I know I told him probably a year or two ago, it's like, dude, we should have you come on the, the you know, cause he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. And uh, that was great. This I photography hope is, is top notch. It is definitely yeah. awesome. We're, we're lucky. We, we get to see a lot of good pictures on this. Show. We do. We find some really good photographers willing to come on and share their work. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd like to bring someone else on uh, real quickly. We have some events coming up in a couple of weeks and we kind of plugged them last 
last show and uh glenn from the uh, sierra seminar is waiting to talk to us uh, okay. just to remind people about the same sierra seminar is it okay with you if i bring him on mm -hmm. Michelle? absolutely okay and good afternoon glenn or evening or whatever it good is. evening hi john hi michelle welcome good back. to see you again yeah welcome too. Back. <laughs> i Thank have you. i have this from last time that we could show again if you want to use this as a talking point Sure. Well, I just wanted to remind your viewers that there are actually, is Frank still with us or did he have to? You know, Frank off? had to drop out. So I'll okay. bring his slide up after you're done talking. And if you want, uh, I well, can I'll just talk on. about both events because okay. they're, they're technically separate events, but they're related and very mutually supportive. But mm -hmm. coming up in about a week and a half, October 1st and 2nd, Saturday and Sunday are two, two normally annual events. We've all had to take a couple of years off for Good. COVID. Why don't I do on, this? Because Westside comes up first, doesn't it, on Saturday? Yeah, on Saturday, Let's, October 1, is the we Westside go. Reunion and Logging Modelers Convention. And it says 34th Annual. So I know this actually started as literally a reunion of former employees of the Westside Lumber Company, but evolved into a, uh, a meeting for people who are interested in the history of that company and in modeling that company. Uh, it sort of focuses on presentations, but also there's a large sales area. Frank has a modeling contest. And, um, but again, it's, it's focused on the logging side of Tuolumne County. This is all, both events relate to railroads that operated in Tuolumne County, California, which is up in the foothills about an hour, about three hours east of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So that event is on Saturday and you can see the website there if you want to get more information or sign up for that. Both of us are offering discounts for pre-registering because that really helps us out. And then our event is called the Sierra Railway Historical and Modelers Seminar, which is a mouthful. So we almost always just call it the Sierra Seminar. Uh, we've been going since 2009. And we also focus on presentations, and I thought I would just outline uh, some of the key presentations this year. Um, and it's coincidentally is a year of many um, anniversaries. It's the 125th anniversary of the railroad itself. And to commemorate that, uh, Kyle Wyatt, who is the retired curator of the California State Railroad Museum, is giving a, a slide presentation called Sierra Railway, the first 100 years. And if you're wondering what happened to the last 25 years, uh, Mike Hart, who is the president of the current and still operating Sierra Railroad, is giving a separate presentation with the intriguing title, Sierra Railroad Return from the Grave. <laughs> because that is a railroad, like many short lines, was uh, losing traffic, barely hanging on, but they've done a great job generating new traffic, and Mike's going to tell us that story. It also happens to be the 100th anniversary of Locomotive 28, which is one of the primary steam excursion locomotives up there in Jamestown, and Mike Neneman's going to give us a 100 years history of that locomotive. And finally, Railtown 1897, which started as a tourist attraction uh, operated by the railroad itself, but later became a state historic park under state parks, um, has been around for 50 years. And Larry Jensen is going to give a then and now presentation of Railtown today versus 50 years ago. So that's a synopsis of most of our presentations. We also feed you all day long. And if you are interested in that, probably the easiest way to find out is to um, either go to the Sierra website, and I think, John, you had that up there earlier. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Was that it's on the first of a, page? Of, it's not this one. Is, this, is it on here? Well, I'll tell you what. I will I will just give you my email address. Because, okay, uh -huh. there's, our, there's a website, Sierra Seminar at Weebly.com, or you could email me, and you can see the address there, and I will be glad to send you a flyer and a registration form and other information. 
Cool. Just one last thing, and I actually have to run like Frank did, is this (laughs) year for the first time we are having a silent auction that will be conducted both during the Westside reunion and the seminar, and the bidding will close at the end of the seminar. We have a great assortment primarily of HO scale, hard to find, in fact, impossible to find Sierra Railway structures and equipment, but also Mm -hmm. some great books on Tuolumne County Railroading. Cool. Nice. Hopefully, you so, raise a lot of money. We <laughs> hope so. Yeah. Do you want Good. to mention anything about the newly founded or started THRA? As uh, sure, because I know that THRA members get special treatment or something at the seminar, don't they? That's correct. Just in the last year, we formed a new nonprofit organization called the Tuolumne Historical Railroad Association, or THRA, and in fact, that's the beneficiary of the silent auction I just mentioned. And our goal is to further enhance um, preservation and publication of railroad history in Tuolumne County. So we're cooperating with state parks, uh, the railroad itself, and several other organizations uh, just to enhance their efforts. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that's a good reminder uh, just for everybody. So it's October 1st and October 2nd at the uh, Sonora Senior Center. Absolutely. Yep. Westside Reunion on the 1st, CR Seminar on the 2nd. Uh, Looking forward to hanging out with you, Glenn and Kathy and John and all the wonderful people there. Great. All right. Well, thanks so much for the opportunity to, to plug our events, and we hope to see lots of folks there. Yep. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Take care, Glenn. All right. Moving right along. Boy, it's almost like we had a uh, itinerary or something. To, we have a big forward. list of things. I wrote a list yeah. so I wouldn't forget anything. because we got It's, a it's lot an agenda. Forward. What else is on your list, Michelle? <laughs> well, I've got... Oh, do you want to just go through it? Is Alvin here yet? Because well, we're going to Alvin time. Should I bring Alvin on? Let's bring... Yeah, let's Shaka-Laka. do Alvin's project. Yeah, we'll bring Shakalaka Bro on. Hello. Hey, it's Shakalaka Bro. That's me. Oh, sorry. Oh, we can't hear you, Shakalaka. Hold on. My bad. I got these headphones. Can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you now. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Here so I am. <laughs> we need an update on your project because we yeah. talked about the project and now so we need an update. Let's remind people what Alvin's working on. Alvin started a, a what is it? A movement, I guess, to get a railroad viewing platform built in Salt Lake City because believe it or not, as important as railroading was to Salt Lake City or is to Salt Lake City and as many trains and train traffic as they have going through Salt Lake City, they don't have a train viewing platform. What's right. up, Salt Lake There's City? nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so Alvin scoped out a spot, the perfect spot for it, yeah. including sunlight for photography. He can put all the details into his proposal yeah. and you've taken your proposal in, right? Yeah. So what's the latest, bro? Yeah. Okay, so um, I drafted up a proposal and I sent it to I sent it to a former mayor. I sent it to the director of parks and I sent it to the deputy director of parks and then I sent it to um, some park planners, the former mayor that I mentioned that. I sent it to UP. I sent it to else i think that's it he sent it to me i sent it to you guys you guys helped me and you started a facebook group that people can follow i did i started (laughs) since we last met i started a facebook group and it's been four weeks or a month about and i checked earlier today and i think it's 104 members so shout out to them for hanging in there and doing this with me and and uh, Sydney's putting the links in chat. So if you haven't checked out his his page, you need to go do that. Go check it out. Go give it a follow. Um, every time I get an update, I post on there. So um, I guess the biggest thing is I met with the former mayor, and the day before I met him, he had talked to someone from Parks, and they they basically said. The park is being funded, so we need to figure out what the what amenities we want at this park. You know what what the public want to see for this. And he said that a rough timeline is sometime in 
the winter, like December, November, January. I don't know. They're going to set up a, a link or something that people can go uh, put in what they want at this park. And that's that's about the time. That is the time we have to say we want a viewing platform. Okay. So we got to get everybody uh, ready and following yeah, yeah. you so we all know when to go and and put in what we would like. And I think it's yeah. important that out of town guests want this because we would come and and spend tax dollars in your tax community dollars. to rail yep. fan on this platform. So as, as a visitor out of town visitor to Salt Lake City from time to time, I value the idea of having a nice railroad viewing platform on the correct side of the track so that the sun is good. I value yeah. that. Yeah, so, no, yeah. absolutely. That's that's huge. You know, anyone that that likes trains is probably into photography or videoing and they know the sun, you know, that's like, I don't right. know, 101 photography slash videoing is sun. Michelle, Alvin, take you're note. Getting, you're getting a question about whether or not people donate to this, but I don't think there is donating to this at this point. I is don't there? think there is donating at this point. So when I talked to the former mayor, he was saying that I was like, dude, I don't know about funding, you know, like well, this could get expensive. Should I fill out a CIP capital improvement project form to get funding? And he said, no, because once this, what we want for the public happens, um, they're going to try to start building next summer. And that would be outside of the fiscal year. For... So they could budget for it for next year. Yeah. yeah. So and they would already... have probably some uh, improvement dollars they can use and yeah. some uh, urban renewal dollars and things like that. So yeah. So so he said, "Don't worry about it." And then I talked to the deputy director guy, and he said, "Don't worry about it." Because if like once it's already in the plan, we we could find funding. You know. Um, so funding isn't a big deal yet, but I understand there's like virtual rail fan and I know that has to be paid for somehow. So I think I need to figure that out. Cause I would like to put a virtual rail fan cam there and it's downtown, you know, there, there shouldn't be a reason why internet can't be available to this, you know, but Right. You'll have to work with them to figure that out. There's a lot of logistics that go into putting VR cameras up. Yeah. Yep. So so that's where we're at. There's going to be a proposal submitted and then a park proposal and then mm -hmm. building next summer, hopefully. So, so we can just all support you by bringing people into your group so you can say, hey, we have this movement of people. And honestly, I don't know if people know, but in the public realm, like the city council level things, a few citizens represent a lot of citizens because typically in this day and age, people aren't really involved in their local politics. So the words of a hundred people to them is the weight of thousands of people. Yeah. So yep. we can make a difference. <laughs> but it'll go a long way. You know, even just yeah. having the 104, six members on, on the, on the page is fantastic. I'm right. so stoked about it. This is man. This is huge. This is you worked happen. hard, Alvin. You typed up a lot of stuff. You worked really hard. I did hard type up a lot of stuff. And it, guys have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. I I have been, and it, it's so rewarding. It's going to be rewarding. Not yet, but it's going to be like, man, I'm so stoked for this thing, and and people are gonna come forever to see this, you know. And I just thought of something. What is it? We're gonna be talking about this on this show about the meet and greet thing that we're doing next year in Colorado, dude, that's 2023, right? 2024. When this platform is built, I'm going to suggest that we should do a meet and greet in Salt Lake city and have the grand opening of that platform with all the YouTube meet and greet people. Wouldn't that yeah. be, cool? be super fun? That'd yeah. be super fun. There's so yeah. much fun real stuff to do out there. I'm getting a little ahead <laughs> of myself here. Cause we're going to, yeah. Cause we're going to talk about that in a minute, but, uh, I want to make sure that people have an action item, right? What can people do to help? And the answer to the question is to go to the Facebook page and add yourself to the Facebook page so that by the time we're talking about this next month, 
maybe there will be 200 people there. And then maybe there will be three or four or 500 people on this group because when Alvin goes to make this proposal to the people that need to hear it, they're going to look at that and say, wow, there's like 1,200 people on Facebook. That means that there's 12,000 people that want to come to this thing. So go to the link. Sydney just posted it again in our live chat and add yourself to the Facebook group. The other thing is it'll help you stay a, a, up to date of whatever progress is happening, right, Alvin? Because you update that page at least, you know, whenever something happens. Whenever something happens. And if it comes down to a point where you need to get signatures on a little petition or something like that, that'll be the place where people can learn about it. So mm -hmm. go sign yeah. up on the Facebook page, please. Get on the Facebook page. Yeah. All right. I, uh, I think pretty soon I'm, I took a bunch of pictures, just a bunch of random pictures from that spot at different times of day. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to add that on there so people understand. Maybe sometime next year we should come out to Salt Lake City. Uh, I, I've been meaning to get back out to Salt Lake City anyway because there are some layouts that I want to do layout tour videos of. And if we do that, we can make it a point to go there and do a video there showing people what it is you're trying to do. Uh, I don't know that we'd be able to spend an entire day there rail fanning from that spot, but something like that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, Just thinking out know, loud here. Yeah. No, rail fanning is, is an experience because you got to go from spots, you, you know, chasing trains. You got to go chase a train. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is more of like a hangout and wait for it to come, which could take hours. You know, it's not the railroad is so unpredictable. But um, there's a depot. The UP depot is a block, maybe two blocks to the east, like directly from there. directly right. and they're they're building a hotel on the back side of it so oh, you nice. can stay at a hotel and then walk to go do some rail fanning that's awesome and then that rio grande one's walkable too from yeah here. the rio grande one's walkable over there well there's <laughs> an idea dave says uh you could do a video and just send it to me oh i guess spot. i could yeah take your phone out <laughs> there but you need a tripod or something your monopod. Yeah. You don't like Alvin's yeah, filming like this? No, yeah, your monopod no, I... won't be enough, Alvin. It's not tall enough <laughs> to get over the My fence. Fingers will get in the way and stuff. <laughs> yeah, the finger. Yeah, yeah. I'm Michelle quality video. My videos always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. No, I, I can find a tripod and, and do like a quick thing, you know. Yeah, yeah why not? Very Take cool. a few run by shots from that spot, and the next time you, you come on, we can play them while we're talking. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right? Get people excited, man. <laughs> I'm excited. You should be excited. This it's is a awesome. big deal. I'm well, excited. thank you, Alvin. That's that's awesome. We're looking forward to progress <laughs> updates on this. Me too. <laughs> um, I don't... Anything else? I think that's all I got to say about that. Follow the page. Stay tuned for updates. Uh, thank you for your support. Man, thank you for your support. This is huge. Like, I couldn't have done it without <laughs> the support. Because, you know, the... the <laughs> It the just having people around is look even Brandon's excited, dude. I'm sorry I don't text a lot, Brandon, but like it's a lot. <laughs> and this is your update. This is what I've been working on. So I don't know. Stay strapped. Get informed. Get on the thing. Let's do it. Get on we'll it. Do it. Get on All the right. thing. So All right, man. Uh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks and we'll on. see you in the future. Yeah, okay. I'm excited yeah, about Alan. it, man. What do you <laughs> say? I said, I'm excited about it, man. Man, I'm excited about it, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you later. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you know, Michelle, we have to talk about... Oh, here it is. Can I bring up something or do you want mm -hmm. to... Yep. You Go ahead. We've got like four more things to talk about. Oh, sure. to I, have that math. I only have two on my list. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> What are the four things on your list? Well, I have, one of them is just my thing, but I have three oh, things. Well, what's your thing? Well, what's we were going to talk about uh, Sparky's Be Angry, the Women in Model Rarity, Operation Lifesaver, and I have a cool little boxcar, if I can point right there, that I wanted to talk oh, about. Operation Lifesaver. I forgot about that. This is Rail Safety Month. This is National Rail Safety Week. 
right oh, now we're, we're, we're right in the middle of it we're on the wednesday jimmy just do it real quick it'll take do it. like let's a minute. do it yeah, okay i was it. gonna give you guys the operation lifesaver message since this is real week and Here, the one thing we want you, everybody to know is that these exist <laughs> how can i make you big i, I, I don't know it's okay right? we're fine so i brought the real <laughs> sign this is the real metal one that the union pacific gave me one of these <laughs> so um every crossing in america for the class one railroads has one of these on it and you'll find it either on the crossing the crossing signal itself or on the little shed next to it and right here is a black number letters and numbers and if you have any kind of emergency you can call this number right here and you get 24 hour dispatcher and you give them this number, which this was a blank one. <laughs> and that is your exact GPS location. And so it is the most effective way to get help. Um, both if you have problems with the rail, say the arms are stuck down or there's something on the rail you see there, anything railroad related, you call this. But also if there's just a traffic accident near it, or you need to know where you are, especially if you're out in the country. So um, here in Colorado, when you drive to the north of us towards Cheyenne, every single crossing looks exactly the same. There's a highway, there's some dirt, there's a crossing and there might be a fence and that's it. And so you, you have no idea how to tell them where you are. And so this makes safety possible around the country. So that is your Operation Lifesaver message for Rail Safety Week. And now you can all be safe out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So so just to be clear, if you're out foaming somewhere and some jerk parks on the tracks or gets stuck on the tracks, look for that blue sign, call the number, tell them what's going on. Because if there's a train coming Correct. that way, they need to stop that train so that there's not a crazy accident. Correct. And there's a question here about 911. They are tied together. If you call this number, this dispatcher is probably already calling 911. If there's some sort of an emergency, they're going to call 911 too. They're oh, also yeah. in they're in inside track calling each other. So yeah. Yeah. The most important thing about it is it'll give the dispatcher that you're calling at the railroad the exact location information. So if they do call 911, they will call the appropriate authority. They will call that. the appropriate 911. They right. they know exactly where you are. Because you know, so the crossing in Greeley has one of these right on our building. But do you know where this, where our dispatcher is for our railroad? Omaha, Nebraska. So if I say I'm on 10th Street, they're like, well, which of the 150 towns between here and there on 10th Street are you? <laughs> and yeah, so, which 10th Street? Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, this is great. The numbers are they go right here. They're black. That's what you look for. That's where you, it's it's truly a GPS location. So. I think that's a a great pro tip, <laughs> especially for all the foamers out there to uh, to know that. I mean. I wonder, it would be kind of an interesting segment to do every month if we have time to do something like, you know, I, would call it, well, I was going to say foamer <laughs> tips. Foamer <laughs> tips. Oh, I like it. We should totally do that. <laughs> it's for, time you know, for the foamer tip of the month. Yeah. Well, I always look for the shed when I'm rail fanning because I'll take a picture of the location because usually there's a name on the shed mm -hmm. of the location. Not that this is going to tell you where that is, but these are right there. So next time you're looking at the little sheds and taking pictures, if you do that, like I do, it's right there. there you go. Cool. Now someone is correcting me. I, I, I said the railroad dispatcher and. Oh yeah. No, you talk to a specific dispatcher just for this system. Right. The R you're not talking to the, the person operator. dispatching the trains. You're talking to an emergency dispatcher. We should definitely clarify that. Right. Thank you, Sport Rock. Because yeah. you're not talking to the person who's moving the trains. You're talking to an emergency dispatcher, just like calling 911. There you go. Here's a foamer tip. This is great. We could have we could have a show just about foamer tips. People could make comments. We'll back from the up. Good job, guys. Ed Dickens, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really good tip, not only for being safe, but also for getting better shots. Because yes. you know, people think, oh, I want to be real close to the tracks and I'll get a really close up good shot. It's like, no, you'll get a crappy shot. That'll probably you're going to get this focus. much of the wheel set <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> in your picture. I, I learned that a long time ago doing videos. You do not want to be right up to the uh, right up to the uh, tracks. So, OK, so you wanted. So that's that was one thing. OK, so we can check that you, one off. You need to see the OC and E cars. I want to see that. I want one okay. of those. We just got it. And so I just wanted to let people know, I actually learned how to use the website store today. So these are online at the, at the museum gift shop online. Should so I order one? Or can you, can Atlas you make them? Yeah. 
Should and I order one, have, or can you save one for me so I can get I'll it? save one for you. We okay. ordered a bunch. When you order from a manufacturer, you order 600 of them. So I think uh -huh. I'm good. I got you one. Cool. Thanks. They come, they come in this packaging. Yeah. And this is I an Evans 50 foot. It's an Evans 50 foot double plug box car. And the one I brought home is the 12065. I doubt. Ah, which way do I go? I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, it's a little wonky tonight. I don't know what yeah, happened. Yeah, it's kind of chunky. Um, this is the one that sits it. behind the museum. So, Okay. Done with that one. <laughs> well, let's let's make sure though. Let's take our time because someone's even asking the question. Someone's oh, is that Inscale? That, no, right? I sold out yeah. of Inscale. For those people that say, you know, nobody buys Inscale. Inscale sold out faster than HO Scale did. So there so you go. So you got some Inscale ones? I had Inscale last year. And oh, I, I had them. That. They weren't what? made by Atlas. They were made by um, a company that went out of business. And I found them on from a private person. And oh. then Microtrains was kind enough to box them all for us, to jewel oh, cool. case them. And we sold them out so fast. And so now we have an order in with Microtrains. So eventually we'll have more in scale. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll have to get one of those too, because you know, I have HO and in scale. Stupid oh, me. What are you saying? Can we get Michelle to autograph? Why would you want my autograph? But I would be happy to do that if you want that. You just gotta come visit me. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Bring your car. That's funny, Michelle. You're going to have random people walking up to you with OCD box cars. Please autograph my OCD box car. <laughs> I've actually signed one before. Somebody yeah. else was super sweet. And I'm like, okay. Maybe they, maybe they can get a selfie with it too. You know, with you. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. That would be really cool. <laughs> I mean, he's asking where to buy the car. It's cmrm.org. And then that's Colorado Model Railroad Museum. On the museum's website at the very top over on the right, you'll see shop and that'll take you right to our gift shop. Oh, look, now, Sydney already got it. I put them on today. Now, if shipping doesn't combine, give me a call and we'll work it over the phone because I don't want, I don't know if I set it up totally right. We got to test it. <laughs> if you're oh, buying more than one, let me know. And if you're in a foreign country, you need to let me know because we need to do shipping different. So, but it says that at the top, if you read the fine print. <laughs> Yeah, but who reads? I just click on. I know stuff nobody, and nobody and does. Then I have to contact them. <laughs> right, I just click on stuff, and then if it doesn't show up at my house, I get mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we also have to let me bring this up real quick um, because this is one of our topics. There's actually two things that we need to bring up. So why don't I bring them both up? Okay. One of them is this, a yeah. top secret producer, who's also part of this group. Right, that you started, yes. and then Say the hello, other, yes. yeah. And then the other thing, I'm I'm actually sitting in her position today because my other computer screwed up. The other thing I wanted to bring up is this because this is something else that we can. Yeah. Now it looks different. Let's try that. There we go. <laughs> so what is this? I right, I know what it is, but I want you to talk about it because that way it's your show. I'm okay, gonna mute myself so... now. <laughs> Um, basically, uh, do you want me to go through the history, Sydney? I'll just talk go about it. Go right how... ahead. Sure. Okay. So I was Nancy... posting the link to the, the, your museum shop. So, Oh, gosh, thank you. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Nancy Workman, who is um, one of the owners of Soundtracks, years ago tried to start a women in model rarity special interest group. And they got it started. And then her, the woman she was working with um, was ill and it didn't it didn't happen. And so it's been on her mind and she called me up and said, Michelle, I think that we need to do this again. I think there's need. And we talked about it and, uh, and I knew exactly who I wanted to call, which was Sydney <laughs> and Christina from the NMRA. And I'm like, this is a really good team of ladies. And so um, I think we can do this and we can put this together. So um, we wrote the application and put this together and the NMRA board of directors accepted us as a special interest group. Um, so a special interest group within the NMRA is a way that the NMRA can take a group of people who have um, some reason to band together and amplify that for others to find you. So um, the Women in Model Railroading <laughs> special interest group is a way for women to connect with each other within the hobby. And so I'm not reading the word for word. You guys can read that. But um, that's kind of how it started. And so, so we have kind of a little... Uh, what did I call us? A steering committee. <laughs> and and it's uh, Nancy and Sydney and me and Christina right now. And, and Cynthia Priest also, who does the NMRA magazine. And she's an amazing <laughs> women are taking over. That's awesome. 
<laughs> so, um, so, oh, thank you, Roy. That's sweet too. <laughs> Glad you ordered cards. Um, I'm really excited about this. And even since we started this, I have made so many new friends. Yeah. And it's Me been too. really, really fun. Um, I, it, it, we have two things. Do you want to do it for the other slide? The next slide. So what do we do? What do we do as a special interest group? Well, we're not here to like conduct boring meetings. We're here to have fun. So <laughs> this is what we do. We have two different Facebook groups because um, they're kind of two different topics. So we wanted them separated. So we have the Facebook group called Women in Model Railroading. And it is where we talk about model railroading and, and operating on railroads and everything within the hobby side of it. But at the same time, crazy people like me and Jennifer, the picture in the upper right over there, <laughs> the two girls in front of the big boy, we're rail fans. And so yeah, we a bunch have, of us like to rail fan too. And we need to show off those pictures. <laughs> so, so we needed a home for that too. So we called it the steam sisters. And so that's where we put our rail fan pictures. <laughs> so yeah. we have these two Facebook groups that are pretty active. Yeah. <laughs> um, our goal is to do a newsletter three times a year, if we, but we're just getting started. We're working on a logo. I mean, we're serious. We started this without having any documentation ready. So everybody's like, what do we got? What do we got? I'm like, you got to give us just a little bit of time <laughs> yeah, so we can get our logos done. But we're getting there. We hope to have our first newsletter out October 1st and working on the content for that. And and you wrote an article, Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Wrote That's a couple okay. articles. So yeah, we're hoping to do some special things that, that help encourage uh, women in the hobby, like maybe some lady night, ladies night ops. Uh, bring a friend campaigns for like your local uh, regional or division type events. And uh, obviously the NMRA annual convention will have a, be participating in that in some way. We'll and then have a time too in that. Yeah. We'll have, and, we'll and then hopefully our members will, will be representing our group at their local and regional events as well. Yeah. So we're hoping this is something that, Women take ownership in their own communities and their mm -hmm. own train shows and and utilize what what structure we can give them and do their own women and model railroading gatherings of their local people. So yeah. so it's a place of gathering. <laughs> yeah. And supporting each other. And, you know, we, we a network of people so that if you want to represent the group at, at a local event and you need some support in some way and we can help, then we will. So. Yeah. So, so that's what it is. And so we're moving right along. Our train is moving right down the track and um, next slide, next slide, sir. Oh, no one said anything. <laughs> so yeah, there's hey, the link. Uh, also, I wanted to point out that you do not have to be a member of the NMRA to be a member of this special interest group. So um, it just kind of helps the group to be kind of officially uh, connected with the NMRA, but uh, you don't have to be a member. We encourage it, but you don't have to be. So feel Correct. free to jo join our Facebook page. It's a great place to try it out and get to know some people and share pictures yeah. in a nice community. It's a private group on Facebook. So kind of what happens in the group stays in the group. So um, yeah, join, yeah, join us on Facebook and uh, have a good time. And and we're out to bring more women into the hobby. So it, it's interesting. Um, I had a lot of conversations with women at the national train show and the national convention this year in St. Louis. And as uh, some of the women that were super excited about connection were the ones that were um, in the manufacturing side or the wife of a vendor. And she goes to tons of train shows, but doesn't really know the ladies because she's not in any clubs, mm -hmm. you know? And so this was a way uh, for the, her to connect with people. And um, just, you know, things that I didn't even think about, never crossed my mind about women out there that would might want connection that are just sort of peripheral or, or involved in a different way than an actual, I'm in a club and I model. Um, and so this hobby is huge. This hobby has all sorts of aspects right, to it. Right. And yeah. So like the way I got introduced into the hobby, right, is through John's work with the channel. So you know, exactly. Love the love the hobby and all aspects of of trains, and then and then I have started uh, operating. So I find that really fun. So you know, I, I'm working on a model, but we'll see. I'm not really a modeler just because I'm working on a model. <laughs> we'll wait I've, and see. 
I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm trying one too shortly. Yeah. Here, so uh, Alvin will be proud of the picture of me and Nancy in the upper corner. There is the tour that Alvin gave us of the, nice. the club in Salt Lake City. Nice. <laughs> so that's where that was taken. Uh, so yeah. So how can you guys that are watching the show, how can you help us? You can help us by connecting people in your world to us and supporting. So and being uh, welcoming to women who may be coming into your club or your museum or your event. Don't assume that the ladies are there to bring the baked goods or wash the dishes or clean the <laughs> kitchen or dust. We may actually want to operate the trains. I want to say uh, something yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. This is the first time I've stayed silent on a show on the show for more than 10 minutes without <laughs> being disconnected. <laughs> I just want to say this because I I've seen some. Um, I'm not going to call them negative comments. I'll just call them maybe questionable comments. Like, someone said, "Oh, since when is being a woman a special interest?" That's not the <laughs> point. That's right. not the point. The point is that there are people out there who want to also enjoy a great hobby. And there's no reason why they should be made to feel like the odd person out because they Correct. don't happen to be a white guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. It's, that's the point. An, an old so, white guy. <laughs> whatever. Well, and I think some women are, are really intimidated to ask questions in, mm. in a standard group of people sometimes. But if you can pull them out into a smaller group, um, they'll be more comfortable to ask questions and maybe learn a little more about the hobby if they do have those questions. Yeah, so. the point is to not is to be inclusive and to make to recognize that there are other people that also want to enjoy the hobby. So, and it really is just kind of well being a dick to to make comments like that. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. So so, so anyway, <laughs> this is what well, it is. I and... think people just don't understand, uh, you know, obviously the perspective that many women have had of going into male dominated spaces and how that feels and, and, and what that experience is like, or, or, or how there is no experience uh, sometimes. So, or it's sometimes oh, negative. Like, like, oh, yeah, are you, yeah. where's your, where's your husband? You must be bored. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Right. Right. Did you bring I mean, your knitting stuff? <laughs> yeah. I've had wonderful experiences with, with people treating me wonderfully, no problem answering questions, but I'm also completely willing to ask the questions too. So, um, right. you know, I, I have to be a little more forward about it, but, um, but yeah, I've had, a, I've been lucky to have a great community out here in the Bay area. That's really accepting. And, you know, I don't feel that there's any problem. I just wish there were more women that knew about the hobby and, and could see the fun and enjoy it. So, you yeah, know, so that's, my, my, yeah, that's my mission. And the wife of the vendor that I'm talking about, she would not just join a modeling group. She wouldn't yeah. do that. That's not what, but, but she found, but she was so excited. She is a member <laughs> already. And she was excited to find like people that she wanted to meet, you know? So it's, that's great. it's meant to be inclusive and not exclusive. I did see a negative comment. Like, why are we segregating things out and separating people out? And I'm like, we're all modelers, but there are, there's aspects of modeling. Just that's why it's a special interest group because it's a special interest. Just like app sig operations, the, yeah. layout design sig, or, or what's that? There's a whole special interest group for like the BNO railroad or something. Right. Like, and there's an that's OSCAP highly line, specialized, OSCAP yeah. So, yeah. And so, a special interest group means we have a special interest, so we want to gather this smaller group and it, look at the special interest. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look there's, for us at train shows and this, conventions and and online and social media. Yeah. There's another small elephant in the room that I think should be addressed. What about trans women? Okay, because I didn't know this before, but I recently learned that women groups quite often are very exclusionary towards trans people. And that's kind of lame. They, at least they can be. Yes. Our group, though, is we're, 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 we're about it. inclusion. I mean... Nice. We have yeah. men in our group too. Don't get it me wrong. Yeah. We're not just we're not just the women in model rating. In fact, Gordy Robinson was one of the first people to say, "I want to be a member." He's the president of the NMRA. 
He's a right. member of the women in model rare reading special interest group. There's many men actually who are supporting us and supporting this group and trans. It, the, absolutely. You identify as a woman. Great. We're here for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Come join us. Yeah. We're, talk we're, about we're a respectful, inclusive, <laughs> friendly yeah. space. So that's what we're yeah. about. I thought yeah. it was uh, worth mentioning because I, sure. I know that there are plenty of people, you know, who would have that same question. We got asked that question actually by someone and it was very sweet. Oh. And we responded with, come join us. Oh, did you? <laughs> We're excited okay. to meet you. Oh yeah. We've, I've gotten several messages. Yeah. So I haven't joined the group, at least not yet. I figured if anything good happens, I'll hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're inclusive to all. Yeah. So is that the the best place uh, to find out information? The link that's on the screen right now. Yeah, that's the best place. That's where you sign up, and we'll be post. We can post information there. Um, probably our events and things will be more on the Facebook group. Yeah. Okay. And, but you, but going here to the NMRE website puts you in our mailing list. Basically, you're you're going to get emails. Then you'll get Perfect. the newsletter. You'll get the For newsletter. Sure, yeah. yeah. So. Perfect. Well, I think that we have one, at least one more thing to talk about. Okay. Um, do you want to both stay on for the last thing? Sure. What's the last thing? The last thing is this. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I think you having, talk about that. having all three of us on <laughs> makes sense since we're probably, well, Michelle, I think you're going to end up doing most of the organizing for this. That's okay. Um, I live here. I, <laughs> I think that we'll probably all be in, involved because we're kind of going to do it jointly and we're going to definitely come out for this. So and let's before talk we about read it. anything, look at what's in red on the screen. It says not confirmed yet. So oh, just, so people, just are. so people don't come back and go, Oh my God, you said you were going to do this. <laughs> this no, no, is no, our no. dream. This is what we're shooting for. This is what we're trying to achieve. Well, so hopefully that happens. Let's just back up for a second. Take, take, yeah. deep, take a deep breath. Yeah. And back up for a second. What is YouTube meet and greet? So let's yeah. start with that. So for John, the past, John, you can explain that. Yeah. So for the past, I don't know, three to five years, something like that, because uh, it did go on th during before the pandemic. So I think it was about five years ago. Our friend Sparky 107107, who's in the chat here. Hi, Dave. Has been doing a, basically an annual meet and greet. And he's done them at Steamtown and, uh, one other place in Pennsylvania. Strasburg. Strasburg, that's right. Yeah. And it would be, a, you know, a once a year thing where he just says, here, I'm coming on vacation and this is where I'm going to be for these days. You know, anybody else that wants to come, come out and we'll hang out together, basically. And Dave. The YouTube community when, people is yeah, kind of where it started. Community. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dave, a couple, few months ago said, hey, I want to do the meet and greet someplace else out, you know, closer to where you guys are. What do you think about doing something, you know, maybe, maybe in Colorado or maybe he asked me where I thought we should do one. And I maybe, maybe I mentioned it because I know the model railroad museum in Greeley there is a place that everybody should see. And I know that there's a lot of great rail fanning to be had. And I know that it's close to Cheyenne, which is where the, the UP uh, big boy lives. Not one, but two actually live in Cheyenne. One is on static display in a park, which is just as exciting as far as I'm concerned to go see because the other one's subject to availability and that's usually not available. So, <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I think, and, and I happen to know someone who lives in that area who's very good at organizing things. Um, she's smiling <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, so basically, I, and there's a question we need to address in chat too. This is oh, Colorado. Where's the... Where's there, the question? Uh, Heath's question. How much is the train ride from the Denver airport to Greeley? Well, it's uh, going to be billions because you're going to have to build the rail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There is oh, there it is. Yeah. In Colorado, you rent a car. I'm sorry. We don't have good public transportation. We're so spread out that we're so far behind on that. There's light rail in Denver, but you're only going to stay in Denver. So, <laughs> yeah, you could probably good question get a shuttle. Heath. <laughs> yeah, you could probably so let me let me answer that question. You could probably get a shuttle or rent a car or communicate with someone else who's going and carpool. 
we need to carpool. You can Uber, but it's like 75 bucks to go from Denver to Greeley in an Uber. So just that's one way. <laughs> so if somebody did that. They came to the museum on an Uber. And I'm like, you did what? <laughs> I'm like, you should have called. I'd drive down and get you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, now, but see, but now everyone's going to be calling you. you I know. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the, the dates are confirmed and the location is confirmed is what Sparky was saying. And that's true, but we're, we're working on booking what we're doing and what days we're doing what and that kind of stuff. So that's why it's not, you cannot say it was on your bullet point list. You said we'd do it. So <laughs> that's what Sydney's saying. Yeah. So we're thinking the, I guess there at the beginning of this, there's an unofficial meet and greet for the people that come in early on the Thursday. And so that's when you come to my house for dinner, if you want to. <laughs> Get off of the stage and walk. <laughs> Alvin's oh, still yeah. plugging. He's still oh, selling. It's still it's still selling his his thing because you yeah. can actually take the train there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> So, so the meet and greet, this is what we have in mind. I'm just going to roughly go through our itinerary for everybody. So on Thursday, the people that come in on Thursday, we're going to gather at my house in Greeley because you're going to stay in hotels in Greeley. Hopefully there's a couple of hotels here. We have Hilton chain. We have Marriott chain. So if you have points, there's hotels for you, but we're trying to stay at the one downtown called the double tree because you're the, all the restaurants are there and the museum is downtown. So, and you're two blocks from the union Pacific main line. So there's rail fanning downtown. So we're thinking that's where you want to be. It's, it's called the Double Tree by Hilton. Home. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's my home is like 15 minutes away driving. So um, but I I will feed you if you come early. So we'll have some burgers or something. I'm not super fancy. You can ask John and Sydney. We're welcoming. Yeah, Michelle, what what happens if you know 75 people show up? I mean, well, I just had 150 here for a wedding reception. Right, right. That's Keith, a I'll thing. tell like, you what's going to happen. Keith's going to be in hog heaven because that guy likes to barbecue and she likes to cook. Yeah, we're going to yeah. break out the flat top too, and we'll have all kinds of food everywhere. So <laughs> it'll be fine. We're good at this. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Friday, we thought we'd spend in the Denver area. So we'll go to the Colorado Railroad Museum. We'll go to the Forney Museum. If you don't know what that is, the Forney Museum of Transportation is uh, about all forms of transportation and they do have a big boy. They have 4,006 sitting there. They have a lot of really cool cars. They have motorcycle collection, steam tractors. It, John. Isn't it 4,005? One in oh, did I say it wrong? Yeah, it's five. You're right, because four is in the park, five's in Denver, six is, okay, sorry. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then um there's also if we don't we haven't talked to them yet but there is a really cool in scale layout there if someone can be there to open it up for us um it's the moffett line in in scale so it's really cool and it's a colorado line and so i that's uh, that's why it's on there private Great. tour of in scale layout yeah <laughs> and then you'll come back to Greeley to the colorado model railroad museum where we will have the evening to ourselves in the museum and just kind of a private party there so that's Friday. Saturday, there's a train show in Cheyenne. So Saturday will be the let's go to Cheyenne. And so we can go to the train show. There's um, the Depot Museum has Harry Brunk's famous layout from the short line and narrow gauge gazette. If anybody has been reading that over the years. Um, so we have that railroad there. Uh, there's train watching. We can we can go to the brewery and have a beer and watch the UP main line. <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff to do in Cheyenne. <laughs> if we're lucky, UP will have open shop tours. We're not sure. We never know. It's part of Depot Days. Sometimes they do that. In the last couple of years, Ed just comes and speaks at the Depot, but that's really fun to go to. So lots of stuff we can do in Cheyenne. So that would be Saturday. And Sunday, I think we're going to work on booking a, a shop tour and ride on the Georgetown Loop. And everything is pretty much an hour from Greeley. So you're within an hour's driving. But you, this is Colorado. It is not the East Coast. So you do have to drive to go places. So be prepared. Yeah. Um, and so we're thinking Georgetown Loop. It's a Colorado and Southern line. It's pretty cool. They have a huge high bridge. Um, neat people. They have uh, some really cool locomotives. They run steam. So, okay. How's that? Oh, and I know we're to, we're to rail fan. In Denver, and we'll have a list of like rail fanning places for everybody, yeah. like the yeah. 48th Avenue Bridge. Love that one. <laughs> so that's the plan. Okay, yeah. what, did I, what did I forget? So, nothing. Heath, nothing. Is ask, Heath is asking if Amtrak goes to Greeley. There's no. <laughs> no, it goes to Denver, and you can yeah. rent a car at Denver Union Station. Sometimes 
Amtrak goes through Greeley when they're doing a different maneuver when they have to go on a different line because there's uh, track work. On I've seen them stopping line. Greeley before when they do that. One time they were arresting somebody, and one time the guy fell asleep and missed Denver, so they actually stopped and let him off in Greeley. Oh, I was so. like an, almost like a flag stop kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Like a reverse flag. Top. I'm not Someone's sure you can guarantee it other off. than you can get yourself arrested and get off in Greeley, but then you're not going to attend any of this stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. So as we, uh, we'll probably can put out some information soon. I see uh, Sparky's asking what are the places to stay in the airport. So we could probably put a little, a little, list yeah, out on we can um, and if you want to stay near the airport there's a whole bunch of hotels that have shuttles on tower road and i can help you guys with that too, I, so. yeah i can work with michelle on a little list and we can put it up on uh tsg's facebook and instagram page so well, i think check, should check there i like the quote the comment about Heath could just get a bicycle start biking Heath. <laughs> sorry Heath. it's the way it's yeah. It's the West. It's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> we we oh. wish everything was connected by rail. I but mean, we'd be taking it like crazy. I, so the one thing about coming here that I think will make this better for everybody, including Heath, is we need a lot of communication if you're coming so we can help arrange carpooling. Yeah. <laughs> so so you know, do maybe, be communicative should, on this. Maybe we should have like a sign-up page or something so that people can talk to each other you know what i mean like if if i know that my friend heath is going i can call him up because i might not know he's going until i see his name on the page or I email him, him i don't call know do i don't that. know how this, did they do that in the past sparky you didn't so. call in so we can't ask you these questions yeah. but um i don't, I don't know, know how it worked you, in the past if they did that yeah I, hey, uh, I don't know if dave wanted to call in i mean we could find out what you know what worked for him in the past. Um, <laughs> he just come in Thursday for the barbecue. <laughs> I make really good guacamole, just so you know. <laughs> the question is, will Keith be making green chili? I already asked Keith. I said, hey, hon, can I have like 150 modelers in the backyard? And he just kind of stared at me for a minute. <laughs> but I said, I'm really, truly serious. It's a group. And he's like, all right. <laughs> uh, that's a big vat of chili, Keith. A big vat. <laughs> a lot of green chili. <laughs> Couple of crock pots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six crock pots all in a row. <laughs> okay. Sparky's saying he has a sign up video. So he might take care of that into that for us. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I think um, I, I, I can create right. a sign up page so that people could get emails. I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. I'll check and into I, that. You guys, um, the, I, I, I haven't had time this week, but I might be able to get a, a discounted rate at the double tree also. So. Oh. Let me cool. check into that and see what I can do. Because if we're doing it, a bunch of people, they might the give thing me also is that if enough people go, uh, you can get that block rate. You can get a room block, or, yeah. Whatever they call that. Uh, but, you know, that's one of those things, though, where uh, people need to – here, Dave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text you the link real quick. I'm going to text Dave the link to, to join us here real quick. Um, but – I'm, what was I saying? Oh, about a block rate? Is that, is that what I was talking about? Like room blocks, we can do that kind of stuff. And, oh, uh, I will, and if we I, know how many are coming, I can also do a group rate on the train tickets. That's so, that's what I was going to talk about, about how we would really need to know who's coming, like how many people are coming. Yeah, unless you guys just want to pay full price and you buy your own tickets. I don't know what how he does this, but... But anyway, I don't know if we're supposed to plan all those details or so, does that. But. So basically, look for more information on both the channels, Sparky's and ours, and um, we'll, uh, you know, if we have some sign-up pages, then we'll let people know. Uh, but we'll be deciding that probably, probably sometime soon, and putting that out. We'll be working so, on this. Um, yeah, I have a little trip here next week, and then October will be hammering this the details out so we'll have have them so yeah I so look at your travel cool. plans that weekend next year colorado wyoming <laughs> yeah i think it would be a smart idea to have some good clue about how many people are going to show up you know like at the at the uh, railroad museum because i mean you know they have limited parking and you don't want to descend on the place with 300 across people the street you have that, a whole other lot 
Keith is asking if Santrax will be at the meet and greet. Well, you know what? George might come up for Keith's Green Chili. He might drive oh. up from Cheyenne if he gets the boot. So what happens is the vendors are all in Cheyenne for the train show. And I know Santrax will be there. George will be there. But so so Nancy could it. come up too. So they could come a day early yeah. and we'll just invite Soundtrax in too. That'd be super fun. I'm sure they would yeah. probably go for that. <laughs> well, Soundtrax is an, is an official sponsor of the museum, aren't they? They so, are an official sponsor. Yeah, and I'm they, actually headed there next week. But we you're going to look for some videos of George teaching Michelle how to do a, a decoder install. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's in my funny, we're, locomotive we're pretty excited it's funny we're having this conversation because guess what i was doing today i'm not kidding i was sitting over there where the computer pooped out on me working on uh, a tsunami blue nami decoder installation into an ho scale locomotive for a video <laughs> that's going to come out i don't know sometime in the next month or two that's awesome well, and i just talked soundtrack. to george today there, so i, I feel like cool? soundtracks is family for me so <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're nice people. So, you know, and I, I really enjoyed going to Durango and getting to do the, the, the video there. Did you get to see that, Michelle, the video I did at, at Soundtracks? No, I don't think I've seen that. Oh. Well, I'm terrible. If it's from the past, you know, I haven't watched it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll send you a link. I'll, I'll put a link in case anybody watching is interested. I'm going to look it up real quick and throw a link out there. To it. So, when we're done uh, talking here. You so Sparky was asking if there's anything else happening that weekend. Um, nothing more so important than the YouTube meeting. But everybody... the Memorial Day weekend is the following weekend. So this is yeah. the week before. This is the third weekend in May. And every year is Depot Days, the Cheyenne train show, and all of that going on up there. So everybody in Colorado goes to Cheyenne <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> So. There's a question, Michelle. Um, yeah. that Thomas uh, Split Rock. I, I assume this means that he's going to come. You know, there. I was thinking about that. We could probably make that happen because we'll be there after we close. So I think mm -hmm. we could we could do some fun stuff that we don't normally do that for groups. But I Th bet I I bet I know someone. Yeah, I bet you do. That's someone. <laughs> or that's an idea right there. That it would be a, a really. Good I think idea. that'd be really fun and we could set that up and do it. Just yeah, it would be really fun in. for sure. That, that would be, be Friday idea. night. We'll do that it would Friday be a good night. idea to make sure that whoever does sign up for it has mm -hmm. an idea what they're doing. Or if they don't, you can have someone who does. You can go to... with somebody. We'll probably have people with yeah. you because we have 138 signals. You got to know where they are. So. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, there's a lot of, um, I, I'm excited about this because I've wanted to go to Dave's meet and greet. So the past few times, but after, as soon as COVID hit, that just shut down all pretty much all travel for me. Cause if I can avoid going in a plane somewhere, I just avoid it just cause I don't, you know, I don't want to get sick with anything, <laughs> let alone, you know, the show stopper as he calls well, it. Well, you know, flying on a plane is just such a pleasant experience in the first the place. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I saw yeah. a hilarious picture recently. I don't want to talk company. about it. It was yeah, like really early. Early. It My was like flight a... tomorrow is at like 6 a.m., which means I'm up at 3 and out the door. Ew. <laughs> Ew, <it's sick. laughs> so. I saw a picture recently that was on Facebook. It was on one of those memes, and it's, it's like a dated picture from the 60s or 70s that's of a couple on a plane eating some delicious food, and they're like, imagine what it's going to be like in 50 years, and then it's a pretzel pack you know oh, yeah, I saw up against because they used someone. to have like real china and wine yeah, glasses yeah, on the plane right? i mean food on <laughs> airplanes was peanuts? good at one time <laughs> now yeah. now it's a ridiculously crappy experience for everybody so yeah so anyway. okay now some people are saying they might come to colorado for a week if you do we might put together like how you how do you ride the trains of colorado because a lot of people think they're just all right here, but it's a good eight hour drive to Durango. It's like crossing the East coast, like new England. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so you have to plan and know which trains you're going to ride in what circle. And it takes a few days, but you can do smaller circles. You can do the Coombers and Toltec, the car to Springs area and do all those in three days. If you want to ride the Durango and Silverton, you got to go further. Yeah. Cause then, you could ride the cog railway up Pikes mm -hmm. Peak. Yeah, that's just Springs. like two hours from Denver. You could ride yeah. the, the Royal Gorge while you're down there. Do, go to the Royal Gorge Bridge and Park. There's a rail fanning, the joint line. There's so much to do in the corridor, even just north in the front range is what we call 
this side, the east side of the Colorado mountains is called the Front Range. And so Denver's in the middle, Greeley's an hour north, Colorado Springs is an hour south, and there's tons of real stuff. So Steve's so excited he couldn't even spell is. This one is going to be the best meat and drink the yet. <laughs> yeah. The best. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, 250 people in my backyard. I'm going to have to ask my mother-in-law if we can use her yard, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, if it turns yeah. out that there's like a lot of interest, um, we might have to, you know, limit some of these things. Out. I mean, I, I hate the idea of having to do that because I'm very in inclusive. You know, I like to be inclusive as much as possible, but maybe um, that would be a great hint or pro tip for people that if someone says on this show in the coming months that we have a sign up page for something and you think you're going to go get signed up soon because <laughs> if it ends up getting limited, you might, you might. Yeah. So sign up, up. up early. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. say it. I'm oh, somebody's going to go to Blackhawk. But... There are casinos. There's the whole Central City Blackhawk and rail fanning there, too, because the old Central City line is there. <laughs> so everywhere you go, there's an old rail line in Colorado. So, <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. It's oh, just a great state to visit in general. So Keith is going to start walking today. So he All can right. get here in 581 hours. <laughs> <laughs> with some rest time in there just a little. The math. that's perfect <laughs> he probably mapped it with the he walking option <laughs> but all right so oh and yeah. it is a family event you can bring spouses and family in i'm gonna whatever. make this go away so okay well i think that's it I'll, i got all my things checked off so other than there's one more thing i was gonna say uh, today okay. is september 21st and it's earth wind and fire day you mean like because the group of their Earth, song Wind, September? Fire? It's the 21st of September. It, and if you don't like 70s disco, I'm sorry for you because I love that yeah. song. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to, since we're talking about things, I, I'm going to talk about this on the, the podcast in a couple of weeks here, but I want to mention it because it's almost four years to the day today that I started the Patreon page for TSG Multimedia. It was cool. September 18th of 2018 oh. i think it was the 18th i'd have to triple check that what but cool anniversary <laughs> i want to mention that because you know i i'm really bad at self-promotion <laughs> like I, I should talk about i i put this banner up earlier that i that i never put up i created this banner when i started doing live streams and i've used it about three times this would be the third <laughs> time right now <laughs> but i want to mention it to people because i'm really trying to grow the Patreon page as much as possible because we have, well, I think of it as a community more than, you know, a Patreon page because I make regular posts and people that are patrons on Patreon get access, you know, Michelle, cause you, you mm -hmm. signed, you signed up pretty early on. Actually. A long time ago. Yeah. Like long ago. before I had a show with you. <laughs> right. So. And uh, two things. One I like to share the videos that are coming out. Like there's some videos that have been shared over the past couple of weeks that won't be out like for another month or two. For well, you get them ad free on Patreon. Well, which is that, that's, the other, plus. that's the other thing. There's no ads, yeah. right? Cause YouTube hasn't, I think they just haven't discovered the channel yet <laughs> or there's just not <laughs> enough views on it for them to sell ads on them uh, because yeah. it's, it's to a very small exclusive group of people uh, that, that get the previews. But the other thing is uh, it's in 4k, which, you know, for some people it doesn't matter, but the other thing is it helps, right? It helps keep the lights on here and going places like to Colorado for a YouTube meet and greet. That's not cheap. <laughs> no, it's going to be, and, yeah, you need to plan. And, wh and which for us, everybody else, it'll, it's a fun pleasure trip, but for us, it's a, it's a fun pleasure trip, but it's also a work trip because yeah, we'll be yeah. filming and we'll be doing and a live stream and we'll be doing a bunch of other stuff. So. Yeah, I just read Gary's Gary's comment about altitude. So just so everybody knows, Greeley sets at about 4,800, 40 somewhere in there, depending on where you are in Greeley because we have hills, some hills and stuff. Denver sets at 5,280, which is a mile high. And Cheyenne sets at 64. 
Yeah. 62, something like that. Cheyenne's higher than Denver. Denver's the mile high city, woo! but Cheyenne's way higher. So yeah. um, when you go in the mountains, like Gary's talking about taking the Zephyr across the mountains, you are you don't go super, super high. They kind of stay in the valleys, but yeah, you're going to go over probably 8,000 feet at that point. And if you ride the Leadville train, you're going to the highest place in America on a train. Oh, really? 13,000 feet, I think, or something oh. like that. You go oh. above tree line if you go to the top. Um, oh, the cog goes higher. The cog takes you all the way to 14,000 yeah. feet. That's yeah. right. So, so if you want to do that. I think the there's, one, there's cog, another cog that's even higher somewhere in the United States. Probably in Washington. In the, Washington. Yeah, area, I don't know. I yeah. But yeah, so just no, they make oxygen in bottles that you can just carry with you if you're nervous. But <laughs> honestly, if you're just careful and you don't fly here and go straight up to Breckenridge, give yourself a day to acclimate. You need to eat some sugar <laughs> when you go high. Take muffins. Seriously, sugar helps. And and, and watch uh, your physical exertion. Right. And you're not going to run a marathon. Yeah. We're going to yeah. move slow and and go at a slower pace because even I feel the altitude and I live up here. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's the altitude education for today. You had Operation Lifesaver. Now you've had your altitude safety. plan. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, it is something to consider. I, I didn't even think about that. It doesn't affect me. So I don't think of those things, but. I'm excited though, and so but as long as everywhere we're going is honestly mid altitude, it's it's not one that's gonna it it doesn't affect people usually just coming to Denver Greeley, but it's when you go above eight thousand feet that you're really gonna feel an effect. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Split Roxy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. When I go on the Cogman, I take like those little trays of muffins for my groups, and then everybody else on the train is like, "Do you have any extra? Could I have a muffin?" <laughs> yeah, I have two dollars. Do you have a muffin? <laughs> All we need yeah. included with this is some coffee now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Always that up too. <laughs> yeah, but no, I I think um, you know again. Remember what was said earlier. These are not confirmed, but these are the plans. And I want to mention that because the TSG live show one is going to depend on you know whether or not the uh, internet is installed, the fiber is installed or not by then, and we don't know that. Uh, and the other thing is. I don't even know what that's going to look like, but I will bring the. We're going to make it happen, guys. We're going to make the live. I'm thing committed happen. to that. Yeah. We're going to make it. In hell or high water, if we have to stand yeah. outside and like hold something up next to, to a 7 Eleven just to have a live show, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a Starbucks with Wi Fi and Greeley? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's Aunt Helen's though. <laughs> so, so oh, in case yeah. they're wondering what we're talking about, the museum sets between two rail lines. And so we have dial up internet. Literally 1.5 gig upload, baby, or yeah, megabits per second, or whatever it is. It's terrible. We can't, we can't do anything live, anything with that. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, it would be so grainy that you wouldn't even know. It's like I think that's them, but I can't tell. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll well, I think we'll do it. We'll make everything. it happen somewhere in Greeley. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Look at this. You know, this is the last thing I would think of. This is what I mean. I'm terrible at promotion. That's a great idea. A good idea. We should totally we could do that. create a TSG live a shirt. Green one. <laughs> it, right? A TSG live shirt that's, you know, uh, specific to the YouTube greet, meet and greet. Like Dave, Dave did shirts yeah. last year. I bought this year. I bought one. I didn't go to the meet and greet, but I bought a shirt. But we can <laughs> do that and then tell people, if you want to be in the live stream, you got to be wearing your TSG live shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man we'll see we'll see as as we start getting things pinned down what happens what could go wrong all these people on live stream <laughs> anyway all, all right. right i think i've said enough oh god we went a half hour over we're way time. over so we should let people go yeah. <laughs> like michelle who has to be up early to fly yeah, i gotta mean, i gotta get up at three i'm going to bed you can oh sleep god. On team, michelle. Michelle. Take, one, take one for the team <laughs> <laughs> all right guys all right so let me let me make sure i mean i'm gonna do it right this time i'm gonna have that little theme song ready when we're signing off so i don't have to go looking for it when i'm like oh we're leaving let me find that video again so you mean like you're doing right now i, yeah, I already did it right <laughs> look it's at him he's, searching. he's looking all yeah. over he's like where is it it's ready to go now <laughs> okay well thank so, you everybody for watching yes <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for being on. Uh, thanks for coming, Michelle.
we'll <laughs> uh, circle back around in October on the 18th with another exciting show. Thank you. Good night. Bye. See you.